Um, Mr. Chairman, there is a new call-in user that just came in. Let me just identify who this person okay. is. Sure. Okay, I so call-in user with the number 416-400. Can you, can you identify yourself, please? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. we can hear you. Can you identify yourself, please? Oh, uh, this is Evangelia Regas for item uh, 2715 Street. Oh, yes. Okay, I see you here. Thank you very much. Item 17. Yep, we got it. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. So we're missing uh, one of the agents. We're missing agent number 11 for Daniel Cheatley. For the agents, yeah, no, but there's a couple neighbors missing. Okay. Okay, are we ready to go? Uh, uh, one second, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, we'll be ready to go. You can, there. yeah, Michael. You can start with the uh, with the opening remarks. For sure. We're good. Okay. Good morning. During a declared emergency, Committee of Adjustment virtual public hearings are being conducted by electronic means through WebEx, an online digital platform and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements and in-person attendance limitations. This will be a virtual public hearing and participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx, an online event that is being moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting either by their computer, a phone or tablet app or by telephone. All participants will automatically be muted on entry and when your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. Only the committee members will be participating by video. Panel members participating today are Mr. Donald Taylor, Neil Palmer, Danny Bellissimo, and Sophia Reddick. And I am Michael Clark, I'm the panel chair. We all are registered participants will be participating by audio only. We also ask that you mute your devices until you are called on to speak. Land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credits, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Uh, in accordance with sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990, as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment is called to order. The committee considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaws that apply to the property, permissions to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consents to sever properties to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of, the of a decision of the committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because Committee of Adjustment and in the event of an appeal, TLAB will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee rendered here today, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, TLAB, or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure is as follows. I will call each item in the order listed in the agenda. And um, making your submissions where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with the presentation if desired, where the committee does not require a presentation. Applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to address the committee and the committee may ask questions and or then take the matter into committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, will be given a maximum five minutes to address the committee. And we have a visual of the uh, screen with the clock, which will keep track of that time. And if you reach five minutes, we'll ask you to wrap up. When addressing the committee, please start off by clearly stating your name and address, especially given that uh, in the uh, new audio uh, world, where you're not even present. We need to have you formally state your name and address for the record. And please remember to confine your remarks 
to the matters outlined in the application. I believe that's relevant on at least one application today. We deal with planning matters, um, building and construction issues, uh, while interesting, uh, are not really what we're uh, making decisions on. The applicant or agent goes first in a contested application and makes their presentation to the committee. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if being substantially revised in order to ensure that the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application have been informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they finish their presentations. And when all speakers have finished, the applicant or agent is given a further opportunity to uh, rebut only those issues and answer those questions that have been raised by the speakers, not to introduce new information at that time. That will then mark the end of the uh, discussion. The uh, application is then taken into committee for a decision. Uh, I believe we have some housekeeping matters to take care of before we get started. Uh, we have the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, I believe it was May the 19th. Uh, I believe that's the only set of minutes we have to approve. If if so, can I have a motion? To, yeah, could I have a motion to approve uh, the May 19 minutes, please? Mr. Taylor, thank you. Seconder for that. Yes, Mr. Chair, I'll move approval of the May 19th minutes. Thank you. Seconded by Mr. Bellissimo, thank you so much. All in favor, the minutes are approved. Um, we have, uh, are there any declarations of interest of panel or staff on the matters before us in this morning's agenda? Anything to declare? Okay, if none, um, any files to be closed, Madam Secretary Treasurer today? None today. Okay, and then we'll deal now, I guess, with the deferral uh, matters. Uh, both is set out on the uh, consolidated memo from uh, the planning department uh, setting out and with the numbers to reason for the re deferral recommendation. Uh, there are items uh, four, six, 20, uh, 4 and 6 this morning, as well as there's a number of matters that were flagged as having requests by applicants to set out either in the materials or in the additional materials received uh, yesterday. So uh, the first one is item number three, that is a request that is 59 uh, lands, Landside Drive. Good morning, Mr. Chair. My name is Trevor Gain. I'm here representing yeah, the so owner. Sorry, Mr. Gain, before we get started, just want to mention that we do have, oh, we have the owner on the line as well as uh, a neighbor from 54 on the line. Uh, so we'll just touch base. So uh, this is an application. Um, we do have uh, revised plans, but I understand based on the planning memo of June the 1st, the applicant has now written in that they wish to defer for more time to consult with planning and satisfy their concerns. Uh, so welcome, Mr. Gain. Yes, thank you. You said it exactly. Uh, we're just still working with planning. We just simply ran out of time to find a uh, favorable house design uh, between all parties. And ultimately there's also a forestry uh, issue. We got a Norway maple in the front. So we're just working with forestry as well to our driveway to kind of bend it around the tree perhaps. And um, and again, uh, satisfy those concerns. So for those two reasons, that's why we're just simply asking for the deferral so we can continue to work on the file. Okay, yeah, because I see there were, you did eliminate a variance and uh, reduced uh, three of three others, but you're still working on it. So that's great. So let's just, uh, anyone have any questions for Mr. Gain? Okay, if not, let's, let's just, uh, just touch base with uh, Mario. Sorry, someone was going to speak. Yeah, sorry. Through you, Mr. Chair, I did. Um, I did contact Mario, who is not on the line. Uh, Mario advised that they would not be joining us, but I did let him know that there was a deferral request, and Mario will be in receipt of the public hearing notice once it um, comes back, if it is in fact deferred. Okay, thank you. Then there's no need. So uh, in the future, uh, if you could perhaps, if you if you notice what I'm introducing, if you could advise me before, uh, okay. if someone listed on the attendance sheet is not present, so I can act accordingly. And uh, okay, thank you. Um, so members, uh, someone ready to make a motion to defer this matter for further consultation? Mr. Bellissimo, I see your hand up. Danny Bellissimo moves. For thank you, Danny. Uh, seconded by Ms. Ms. Ruddick. Thank you, Sophia. All in favor? 
the matter is deferred. Okay, the next one is item number four, which is on the planning list, uh, 49 Burr Avenue. Hi, I'm uh, Paul Vicente. I'm uh, representing uh, myself. I'm the owner of uh, 49 uh, Burr Avenue. Okay. And, uh, I'm asking for a deferral today because um, uh, city planning suggested that I make some uh, changes to my uh, zoning uh, zoning review. And so I submitted the, uh, the revised plans to zo zoning and I haven't uh, received a, a zoning um, a revised uh, view yet. Okay. And that's the reason why I'd like to the 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 fur. The um so these changes to my revised uh, plans will will delete uh section 3 uh 4 and 5 of the zoning review. Okay, so you're going to come back at another time when you're ready to go when you've conferred with planning and I see they were asking for a deferral as well as well as you asked for one here and this yes. was uh uh, this is for a new dwelling with eight variances. So um, you're making changes to, as recommended by city planning, as you've advised, they've also asked. So I don't think we need to hear further. Uh, we do, I do note, uh, moderator, we do have two neighbors on the line from 44 and 46 Beerland Drive. Are they on the line? Could you just touch base in with them? And that That's correct, Mr. Chair. We have both of the neighbors uh, on the line. Okay, so let's just check in with that first with them very quickly. First of all, Wen Rosen at 46. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Wen Rosen from 46 of Yellow Drive. I got this letter from the city. Personally, I don't like the idea. Um, yes, this sorry, ma'am. Ma we're not discussing the merits today. The applicant yeah. is asking for a deferral. So, so the person who wants a deferral is fine with me, but. Um, yeah, um, just let me okay, know so when we're back. If you have any other issues, you can write in a letter, or you can contact if your your neighbor, let them know perhaps, uh, or city planning to send a letter in. Uh, but we're not going to be hearing this today because good news, he's making changes because uh, city planning was not uh, happy with his application either. Okay. Okay, thank you. So you'll be, you'll be, you'll be re-notified, and if you're not satisfied, you'll have a chance to re-attend another day. Thank you. Okay, have a great day. The next neighbor, 44 of Ireland, Anthony Zanardo. Mr. Zanardo, welcome. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, uh, okay. I, I basically, will I be receiving notification for the new changes once it's uh, once it's done? Yes, you will. Okay, then uh, then I'll reserve comment until I receive the new uh, the new uh, variances request. Absolutely, absolutely, sir. Yeah, we're not going to be hearing it today because he is going to be making changes. Uh, but, so I, remember, but, I, but I will be receiving something in the mail with the new date and the changes, right? And at that point, yes, I can. You, sure, if you yeah. receive the first time you receive it, you're within the notification area and you'll uh, receive that. There'll also be a notice placed on the house, just like there was this time. You're in the notification okay. area. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh, members, motion to defer. Danny Bellissimo moves for deferral. Thank you. Second. Seconder for the motion, please. Ms. Reddick, thank you. All in favor, the matter is deferred. The next one is uh, item number six, 60 Halliburton Avenue, uh, seven variances uh, with, with um, additions. Uh, we, it's interesting, we don't have any comments when we look at uh, this matter on our, uh, our materials. There's no nothing here, but that's perhaps why community planning is asking for more time. Um, so this is 60 Halliburton, and the speaker on this item is uh, Sir Sean Galbraith, agent for the applicant, as well as it uh, looks like the owners are on the line. Mr. Galbraith, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Um, community planning is asking for a deferral on this uh, for reasons one and two. We understand and we're okay with that. We have a revised zoning notice, but it arrived quite late and um... Uh, it, it probably wouldn't make sense to go forward today without planning, having had a chance to look at it. Yes, there doesn't seem to be anything on file. So um, we'll see you back here again. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Members, uh, motion to defer uh, item number 660 Halliburton. Mr. Palmer, thank you. Ms. Reddick, thank you. All in favor, the matter is deferred. Okay. Um, Item seven, uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, 
Star, but Berzik just advised that this matter uh, has to be automatically deferred. It's 312, 314, 316 Browns line. It's for a uh, five-story mixed-use building with six variances. Hello. Hello. The speaker on this map is uh, Hugh Trung. Hugh Trung is yes, speaking. Um, I wasn't aware that we were defer um, because I spoke uh, to our planner and I was also in contact uh, with Nicole. And so... Okay, let, let's let uh, the uh, Secretary Treasurer weigh in. Sure. So I apologize that you weren't notified in advance. There are mistakes on the notice that went out. Uh, the figures are incorrect. And in some parts, it should have said minimum instead of maximum. Mm -hmm. So if the committee were to make a decision today, you would not be able to get a permit or proceed with the proposal. So I believe the issues are items four and five on the notice. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. Um, but I just want to make a quick note. Um, the uh, the one on uh, for number four, we actually have met. Um, uh, we met the requirement, so we're asking for that one to be removed. Okay, perhaps that can this can be discussed. Uh, you know, other than at the public hearing, if the matter is being deferred, perhaps you can call staff tomorrow, uh, and you can uh, go through this uh, matter. Is that acceptable, Ms. Bartosik? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, is that okay, sir? You can. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, well, yes. I, uh, I guess there's there's not much we can do at this moment. Yes, because the uh, notification is is incorrect. So. Okay. Let's see, right. members. Okay, so we'll see you back here again. Please contact staff, and I'm sure they'll do their utmost to get you on the, the next available agenda. Danny Bellissimo is for deferral. Uh, sorry, Mr. Melissa Chairman, Mo. we have we have a neighbor uh, on the line, uh, Julia Del Vicario, for three. Oh, for okay. I didn't see. I thought line. I had an owner. I thought I had the owner. I don't. Oh, sorry. Yes, um, three twenty Browns line. Yes, I see that. Julia Del Vicario. Yes. Sorry about that. Um, as you may have been hearing uh, while you're on hold. Um, this matter has to be automatically deferred because of a deficiency. Yes, in the yes, I, I can see that. Yes, yes. But uh, can I uh, suggest something? Uh, if it's on the merits, you know, we could perhaps state something quickly for the record, but we're not going to be discussing the merits today. But if it's something that's helpful to the applicant to know what your issue is, your position. Uh, okay, just my issue is there is not enough for parking and five store building is. Uh, uh, impossible. Okay, okay. I don't want five-store building. Uh, Three-store building, fine. Yeah, no more than four, because there is not the enough parking for 15 units. Come yeah, on, they have a 40 frontage by 115. Yes, ma'am. We're not discussing yes. merits today. The matter is being deferred, so we we're in the middle of a public hearing. So because we're not okay. going to be. Dealing with okay, this matter. Send me a new note and then I, when I have more time to have a help because I received this note June the first. Yeah, you'll be re you'll be receiving another notice notice when this matter All proceeds. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank we'll see you back here again. And okay. you can at least read your notice, so that'll be in the minutes, just as what you have to say. Okay, uh, and we'll see you back uh, here again. Thank you, ma'am. Be well. Bye bye. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, can I have a motion, members? I think Mr. Bellissimo. And Ms. Roddick yeah, may be yes, uh, still stands. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Matter is deferred. Okay. And I think that the last item is the one I mentioned that uh, is a request by the applicant for Tenton, uh, Tettenhall uh, Road uh, on item 16. Um, and if the applicant is uh, Mr. Flynn, it's a request by the applicant to defer. Good morning, Mr. Flynn. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you, sir? Wonderful, sir. Good. So we are requesting deferral uh, as a result of the comments of planning department. I've had conversations with planning and we are going to be making revisions, which we hope might uh, satisfy planning department. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I sent a note here about a question for, oh, that was on the, okay, that was on 59 Promenade, sorry. I'm just reading my notes in another spot. Uh, okay, so Mr. Flynn, you, you wish to have this matter deferred. Uh, we don't have anyone else on the line. Committee members, any questions for Mr. Flynn or is someone ready to make a motion for, to defer? Any Bellissima moves for deferral? Thank you, Danny. Seconded by? I don't have visuals. Okay, Sophia Roddick, thank you. All in favor? The matter is deferred. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. Uh, be well. We'll see you again. Thank you, and you too, sir. Okay. Okay, that's uh, all for the referrals for the morning agenda. So uh, we can go back to the top and um, start off with item number one, um, 6 Norval Street. Uh, Hello. Good morning. Just want to hang on, please. So while I introduce the matter, it's 6 Norval Street. It's an application construct a two-story rear addition and a deck in the rear yard. We only have uh, the single variance. The FSI, uh, we have three letters of support, and the speaker on this matter is Katie Che, the agent for the applicant. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Yes, I'm speaking on ha on behalf of the owner, Tiana Gagic. Okay. Um, so very straightforward. I don't believe we need a uh, presentation from you. Is there anything you'd like to advise committee members, or I'll see if anyone has any questions for you. Well, we do have a question regarding urban forestry. We have a condition number two, and it's a submission of a complete application for a permit to injure or remove a privately owned tree as per City of Toronto Municipal Code Chapter 813. However, we do not believe the condition has merit because we do not have any trees on our property. So we are hoping if this hearing is successful, then we would like to submit a request to forestry for a clearance letter. Is that the procedure? Uh, perhaps I, maybe a staff can perhaps comment. Sometimes the, the request is because they want space for a tree. Uh, you're saying there is no tree. Now is that there's no city tree or there's no private trees on your property? Or we don't have either. We don't have city trees, nor do we have private trees. Okay. Maybe you should have some. Um, staff? <laughs> Madam Secretary Treasurer, uh, the condition is um, urban forestry too. It should still apply because there could be trees on a neighboring property that might be affected. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the subject property. Um, I don't believe there are trees on our neighboring property either. We're a semi-detached. Uh, the neighbor directly beside us um, don't believe they have a tree and the neighbor to our next door neighbor to the south also do not okay. well they've asked for the condition if it's not an issue then it shouldn't be a problem to clear it down the road okay um i actually have confirmation that there are no trees the tiana just texted me <laughs> Well, anyway, the, uh, the department has asked for a condition. We have 40 app almost 40 applications. Uh, we can't, if, the, if there is no tree, then the condition will be cleared. Okay. So we take your word for it, but we can't, we have to sort of let that, you know, sit and, and, and apply. And if it's not applicable, it's obviously not applicable. Okay, but who do we uh, take that up with? You can go with, with urban forestry, you can call staff in the morning and perhaps they can assist you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. So does anyone have any questions for the agent um, on this matter? Is someone ready to weigh in with a motion? Danny, Danny Bellissimo has a couple of questions of clarification. If I can ask the applicant, uh, is the second floor, is that plan outdoor terrace four feet? Is that a second floor terrace? It is a second floor terrace, but it doesn't go past so okay. I'm, I'm just asking if it's a terrace uh, because the, the notice says a, a rear deck in the rear yard. It doesn't say anything about the, the second floor terrace. So the notice is incorrect or inaccurate, correct? Sorry, are you asking me? Yes. Uh, it is a terrace. Okay, so the application for a deck in the rear yard in the first floor and a terrace on the second floor, right? Correct. Uh, next question has to do with uh, the labeling. Is, is this a two-family a two dwelling? Do you have two kitchens, one on the first floor, one on the second floor, and you only have one bedroom in the house? We are turning it into a secondary suite. So the basement and the first floor 
is going to be um, one unit. Um, and the second floor is proposed to be another unit. It's a mother and daughter living That's, in the home. That clarifies it. Thank you. Um, if there are no further questions, I'm ready to make a motion. Okay, go ahead. No other questions, uh, members? Okay, go ahead, Mr. Bolitsman. I find that the variances are minor in nature and move for approval on the condition by forestry. Number Thank one. you, sir. Thank you, seconder, for that. Ms. Ruddick, thank you. All in favor? It's unanimous. You have your approval. Thank, thank you, Ms. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day. You too. Late hours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, item, yeah, and I, I'm, okay, item number two is um, 8 Badger Drive. It's an application to instruct the second story addition above the existing dwelling and to convert the existing basement into a secondary suite. There are um, four variances. We have comments from uh, Ravine's Natural Feature Protection. And um, I believe that's all we have. Uh, the speaker for this application is Oscar G. Manzo, the agent for the applicant. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Oscar G. Manzo. Uh, I am uh, speaking in regards to 8 Badger Drive. I'm the owner of it. Okay. Uh, you're aware that an, uh, a ravine and natural feature protection application is required, as uh, set out. And it's the only thing we have uh, on this application is a note from uh, ravines on this yeah. matter. Okay, very good. Committee members, is there anything you'd like to advise uh, the members on this matter? Or otherwise, I'll just see if they have any questions for you. I don't think we need a presentation. No questions? Nothing you would look, like to add, sir, Ms. Buddy? Sorry, I just want to clarify. I think there's a forestry condition two on this as well, is there? Yes, sorry, I didn't mention that at the outset. I see it is urban for uh, UF2. So your question for the applicant is whether he's aware of the urban forestry uh, condition that I didn't mention, in addition to the application to uh, natural feature protection. Correct. Sorry? Yes, we're aware. There is, but we're, uh, we put in the application and there's no trees or any of that that's going to be removed or damaged. Uh, okay, thanks for catching that, Ms. Ruddick. I didn't mention that in my introduction. Uh, any other questions or is someone ready for a motion? So I actually have a question for you, actually. Uh, we got uh, some minor variances. Um, I believe most were approved or whatnot, but uh, there was one with the, um, uh, the, I guess, the terrace above the garage. Uh, we dropped it down to, uh, it's still over the four square meters, but we dropped it down to 7.8 square meters. Uh, okay. Oh, we don't, do I don't see that. I see it. That variance for you at 12 square meters. Oh, the, the city called us and asked us to drop it down to under eight and we put it to 7.80 meter, square meters. Uh, uh, staff, Madam Secretary, do we have those, any pl revised plans in this matter? I don't have anything. Okay, so you don't know about any request that we don't have a copy of a memo or anything requesting that they reduce that. And we don't have a the fact that it was actually done. He since he's reduced it to seven point. Sorry, seven, I'm not seven aware point of eight. anything. Okay, so perhaps if he's done that, we can just uh, advise the members and uh, the members can uh, revise the approval to 7.8 since that's what you've already done. Mm -hmm. And start deferring and checking and whatever, right? There's no need for that. Members, any questions for the applicant? And if no questions, is someone ready to uh, weigh in with a motion? With item four, the second story front balcony be reduced to 7.8 meters, square meters. And I would like to move, find the variance of uh, minor in nature and uh, just move with the change regarding Item number four, Bulls balcony will have a maximum area of 7.8 meters square, square meters, sorry. Okay, and then urban forestry on, on this one as well. And also urban forestry condition number two. Thank you. Seconder for that. Mr. Taylor, thank you. Any comment? All in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Manzo. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Take care. Your full subject to the appeal period. Okay. So three and four have been deferred. So we'll uh, move on down to item number five, 125 Redgrave Drive. 
And this is an application for additions. I'm just sorry, Mr. Just... Chair. So, but... Before you begin, um, yes. we have two registered owners, um, but it will be Paul Vicente that will be speaking. Item number five. Oh. It's the wrong item. Right at number five, you're saying the neighbor at 123. Sorry, Mr. Chair, disregard disregard what I said. Okay. Okay, item number five, 125 Redgrave. It's to construct a two-story front addition, a second-story addition above the existing dwelling, and a new covered for rear porch. Rear porch. And there are three variances. Uh, we have revised plans, but no revised notice, so I guess it doesn't affect the variances on this. Um, planning is recommending refusal of variance three pertaining to height. And in the additional materials, we have uh, three letters of support from 127, 154, and 152, Redgrave. The speaker on this application is Andre Grisolia, the agent, as well as we have the neighbor present at 123, uh, Redgrave, uh, right next door, is registered to speak. Good morning. Uh, my name is Andre Grizzoli. I'm the agent uh, for the owners at uh, 125 uh, Redgrave Drive. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Would you like to just give us a brief? We have someone, you know, a neighbor here with comments, and uh, we have community planning requesting, first of all, uh, refusal of variance number three, the height of your flat roof. So the Sorry, um, so the height of the flat roof is at really at 8.02, uh, but there's a skirt at the front, which is minimal, that takes it up to the uh, the variance that's requested uh, at 8.58. Uh, at the time when I talked to planning, they said if they would, if we would like to see it at about 8.2 or 8.02. So I I found it I found it not necessary for me to change the whole roof. For that only small skirt at the front, uh, at the eight point at the eight point zero two mark. So you're saying that the height is not across the whole property; it's only for it's, a. It's, uh... it's only it's only to accent the bit of the front entrance, uh, so it'll give it a little bit of curb appeal. The rest of the roof is at eight point zero two, at which the planning wasn't what didn't have a problem with. So I considered it to go through a committee with regards to what I have. Uh, yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah, they seem to not say that in the report. They just say, uh, you know, we don't have any approvals in the area for flat roof height. Opinion existing height of 8.58 would not be in keeping. They're not mentioning that really you're saying you're lower other than that one point, and I guess you would be okay. And I'll have our resident architect, um, panel member, Mr. Bellissimo, can sort of advise, and uh, you wouldn't have a problem if that's the case to have it tied to the plans, I would take it. Right. So anyway, let's see if any of the members have any questions uh, specifically with respect to the height uh, on this application, and then we'll hear from the neighbor of what their concerns are. Uh, Danny Bellissimo has some questions of clarity. Um, could the other members also let me know, as well as the applicant, I'm zooming in on your drawing, and I can't see any of the height limits or numbers, dimensions, they're all little rectangles. Is it... Contaminated this whole drawing. I can't see any number, any dimensions, any elevations. Elevate. Um, uh, well, the elevation uh, on A9 shows it uh, from average grade to the top of the parapet, which is that little skirt above, to be uh, 8.58. That's what they determined the, the total I'm asking, height. Sorry, my question, and I'm asking the some members can weigh in too. Maybe it's that. Mr. Bellissimo, you're Mr. correct. The drawings are distorted. Yeah. So, yeah. however, they've given us the plans in the PDF. The numbers do not show up. They're just little squares. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted some clarification because I thought maybe my computer wasn't having problems here. Yeah. But that's my question, but that's fine. I, I just don't know how we can deal with height without looking at numbers. Thank you. Okay. Interesting that. Um... I have, I'm using a, uh, a Mac computer and it, it seems to be a little bit clearer on this, but it's, uh, you know, if it's fuzzy, it's fuzzy. So you don't see what uh, the applicant is talking about of uh, that the height is otherwise lower. Um, 
Yes, yeah, correct. I can't see any dimensions. All the dimensions are little rectangles. There's no numbers. So I just want okay. to clarify, Barb, clarify that. Thank you. Okay. Well, maybe if uh, the applicant obviously does not want this commission condition imposed uh, on the height, I perhaps I'm not speaking for him, uh, or I don't even know if he could proceed. Perhaps this matter needs to be adjourned so he can provide us with proper plans. Madam Secretary Treasurer, what do you what do you feel? And what do the other members feel? How can we make a decision if Mr. Bellissimo uh, is unable to verify uh, plans as to what the applicants say? I guess it depends if the committee members are have a concern with the height. Well, obviously, assuming that they're they're you know they see the the request for from planning which doesn't mention that there's only you know typically when planning sees a situation where they'll ask they'll, they'll approve it but they'll say make it subject to uh to be constructed as illustrated on the architectural plans as it refers to the heights and that would solve that problem correct but uh, i don't know if that's this we do have a planning uh request here to eliminate that variance that's why i'm asking perhaps the best thing that the applicant to do if that's the way the members are leaning is to get this matter deferred so you can provide us with plans that are uh, e able to be read. Anyone have a comment on that? Uh, Palmer, uh, just I think the the heights are depicted but not readable in the proposed north elevation. Perhaps the applicant could just clarify that. That yeah, that's perhaps we can get that up and just, just we can take a look at that as well for us. It, it's not. I can't tell what drawing number it is because the it says well, A and then it's a box. If we're if we're looking at the drawings that were submitted by to committee, it's A nine. It's item number A nine that was there that were sent. Uh, okay, to that's committee. what I'm saying. I can't tell. It says A and then it's a box. So I'm saying it's a proposed north elevation. Is that the drawing that depicts what you want to uh, the variance in the height? Yeah, there is no yeah. even. Yeah, there's no yeah, numbers. It's in the north North's elevation, eight. which has eight point five eight. 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 Yes, okay. and that's going to the top. The that's the 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 highest point. But what I'm trying to say is, if you look at the low the lower point where it says proposed top of lower roof parapet, that's the majority of what the roof will be. Um, and so there's, uh, one, there's one labeled proposed roof plan. Like your plans are can be what they're labeled can be read, so we should be able to look at the right page. So, Mr. what page do we want to look at? M page page seven. Mr. Or Chairman, or, or if if I can interrupt, I we think the issue students, we don't have we don't see those numbers. Those are just blank boxes. Tell us what the page is called. Is it what's the page called? Is it the proposed roof plan? Is it it's the? A, it's it's the proposed it's proposed north elevation. And there's also the proposed, it's a section elevation AA also that was submitted to committee also that shows it. Very yeah, there's a section elevation AA. One of the pages is says elevation AA. That's right. That'll that'll also show you where the proposed established grade is. And it has two two heights. It's got one that's going right to the top of this little skirt that's just an accent that has 8.58, which which was picked by the zoning review to be the max, the, uh, the height. However, most of the height is at 8.05. Okay, Mr. Bellissimo, are you able to, I can't deal, I can't see this or, uh, and yes, Mr. Mr. Rosolia, next time you come to committee, you gotta get in the prime and staff, if you receive plans like this, how do you accept plans no, like this? Mr. Chairman, oh, if I can, if I can interrupt, please, sorry. I, I don't believe that the plans yeah. themselves are actually corrupted. I think it may have been a problem with the combining of the agenda. If you give me a minute, I can okay. try to pull the original plans out of the actual file. Yeah. Maybe they are clear. Okay. Well, let's see if Mr. Bellissimo, would that be helpful to you? Or are you, uh, are you okay yeah. with this? We're relying on you here, sir. Yeah. I'm, um, uh, uh, my 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 comment is that all the drawings are squares and there's no number on any dimension floor plans sections elevations none of them have dimensions they're all little the only squares. one that shows dimensions is if you look at the section drawing a a it will give you the dimensions along the right hand side you know because the only issue is if it's not mr grassoli's issue and he 
presented and submitted proper plans and it's a matter of the conversion as the moderator just said then it would be unfair to defer and have the time delay to have to do that so i'm just asking if it's possible first of all if paul can find the correct plan for mr but or is it possible are you convinced you know satisfied that the majority of the roof is it is lower based on what you see and if you can then maybe we have to defer but it would be unfortunate if it's not if it's a matter of the at the moment the at applicant. the moment i am projecting uh the plans that i took out of the file direct and it seems that okay. the the dimensions are readable so if any of the members would like me to specifically go to uh one of the one of one of the pages okay. that shouldn't be a problem Okay, because we're spending a lot of time on this. We still have a speaker from the neighbor, the neighbor to speak, but I just want to make sure you see, and I guess it's primarily maybe Mr. Bellissimo should get made, paid more for being an architect on the plan. <laughs> Only kidding, but uh, are you able to make a motion? Are you, can, are you, if it comes down, we haven't heard from the neighbor yet, but if you were, are you inclined to, to agree that these plans, assuming the plans, it's not his fault and the plans were just, Corrupted in the conversion process for our agendas, that to make him wait. Provided we, we still haven't heard from the neighbor, I just want to know. Or, or you're, if we're at a point where you're not going to be able to do that, then we might as well just defer it anyway. We really spend like a long time on this. Um, I, I, I can, I could take the staff's uh, comments when the drawings are uh, visible at their end, and we can review it that way. If One moment, uh, yes, Mr. Mr. Bellissimo, I'm just trying to bring that up again. Okay, so why don't we just hear from the neighbor while we're doing that? How's that? Okay, the neighbor's issue is height or what the neighbor's issue is. So let's hear from the neighbor while you're trying to get those plans. I have no issues. Sorry, the neighbor, Mr. Muto, 123. I have no issues with the, my neighbor's uh, uh, making a bigger house for his children. Okay, wonderful, because typically people only, you know, attend this meeting and stay on the line when they have issues and they're opposed. So very nice of you as a neighbor to. Uh, 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 right? uh, Mr. Chairman is my neighbor and uh, uh, next door to me, I like, I'm just out of interest and out of support. Okay, wonderful. Nice to hear. Okay, so we don't have any issue with the neighbor next door opposed here. Uh, if that changes anyone's position. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, so back to committee. Uh, any any follow-up questions for Mr. Grisolia, or is someone ready for a motion? Uh, or are Danny, you telling us that you're you're not convinced that the height is in fact uh, a uh, you know just a pinch point for the the higher the variance amount of five point eight point five eight? Um, it's not that I'm not convinced. I can't read the number. So uh, I, I, if we take the applicant word for it. Um, there's no way of wording it, uh, it because height is height. So, uh, well, then you uh, could, I guess, tie it to the plan. You can you construct as uh, yes. I, that's how I was going to suggest. I could tie it to the uh, all the elevation drawings that show the heights. Yes. Sure. Okay. Thank you, sir. So you're making that motion? So, yes, I am. I'll move approval um, on the condition that the variances be tied to the elevations that show the heights uh, of the roof. Okay, and um, I note that in the additional materials, as I stated, we do have the other neighbor in support in 127. Okay, so uh, do we have a seconder for that motion? Mr. Taylor, thank you. Any comment? Okay, um, all in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. So thank you, Mr. Grisolia. Hey, thank uh, you. Sorry for the confusion. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't were able to get it through for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Danny. I believe you. Yeah, so does Danny. Thank you. Okay, six has been deferred. Seven has been deferred. So moving on to item number eight, 22 Delma Drive. We have a, this is a revised page for the agenda showing some changes. Uh, this is an application to construct a new dwelling. Uh, there were three. Now we have two variances. They eliminated the coverage and um, also reduced the floor space index. And we have the small dwelling height variance. Um, we only have one speaker, Mark Lilly, on this application. Uh, we have a company letter, a planning memo, uh, looking for some modifications. We'll hear from, uh, I believe it's 
yeah, the, the, that's right on my review. And we'll hear from Mr. Lilly. They asked it reduced to 0.55, but he's reduced it to 0.57 from 0.62. Uh, so the issue is what's the difference and whether the committee is satisfied that that is uh, at least some movement in the correct direction as requested. Uh, in the additional materials, we have urban forestry requesting we deny variance one uh, and the FSI and lot coverage as it will affect trees. Mr. Lilly, welcome. Yes, hello. Good morning. <clears throat> uh, well, we have um, your visions and we have uh, the letter, the, the planning memo dated May 24th. So you're not having quite done what they've asked, if you, if you can just advise the committee why this should be worthy of support. I don't think it's a sure. difference, correct? Yeah, we, we uh, uh, as you mentioned, we had three variances. Um, we did discuss with uh, planning and they wanted us to get down to 0.55. We did work hard to make changes to the design. We got rid of the lot coverage requirement, so we're at 33%. Uh, we did chop off quite a bit of the back of the building uh, from the original. And we also reduced square footage on the building on the second floor, uh, bringing the, the south wall in. Um, we tightened it up as much as we could, and we're, we're at 0.57, so we're at a difference of point, uh, 0 0.02. We're hoping that uh, that that movement will be close enough to, to make the um, approval. Um, it should also be noted that the owner did um, get a petition of nine of the neighbors uh, uh, who are in support of our application. And as far as I know, we don't have any um, opposition to this this project. So uh, I'm hoping that will be satis satisfactory. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lilly. Um, yeah, can you just let me know or let us know uh, how many square meters we're talking about at that point two difference? Uh, so our original application was 311.25 square meters, and we're down to 285.73 square meters. So I think the difference is about 25.52 square meters. You know, but what, what's the difference between the 0.2 that they requested at 0.55 and you at 0.57? Oh, uh, I think it's around 10 square meters. Yeah, that's the number I was looking for. Thank you. Uh, members, any questions for Mr. Lilly? Uh, well, there are no other speakers. Uh, there is also an urban forest. Well, there's the urban forest. You perhaps you got to speak to that. They're looking for a uh, uh, through a refusal or because you're. Yeah, I, I, I think they're an issue. I only just found out about this, and I still haven't seen their memo, so I'm not exactly sure what the issue is. But I did speak to them. It seems that uh, they're concerned about the tree at the front of the property. It's an existing tree, obviously a city uh, tree. And we have, I think their concern is that it is, uh, or that the driveway is encroaching. Uh, the driveway is existing and we're planning on leaving the driveway as is. So I don't foresee any issue in terms of construction damage to the tree because we're not making any changes to that. So, but again, I haven't seen that memo, so I don't know exactly what they're referring to. Okay, thank you. Uh, members, any questions for Mr. Lilly or is someone ready for a motion? Any Bellissima is ready for a motion if there are no further questions. Uh, no further questions. Uh, I find that the variances are minor in nature and move for approval. <clears throat> uh, as per the waiver, that would be number two and number three. As it stands, I don't think the zero two makes a difference in yeah. such a large building anyway, visually from the street. Um, and the con condition by forestry. Thank you, Mr. Bellissima. I'll second her for that. Mr. Taylor, thank you. Uh, sorry, sorry, if I may, Mr. Chair, just to clarify, the urban forestry conditions, I believe, would be number one and two. Uh, urban forestry requested condition one in a memo dated June 1st, and they requested condition two in the consolidated memo dated June 2nd. So I think we should uh, include both. Yeah. It's just a motion. Acceptable, Danny. Is that okay, Mr. Bellissimo? Yeah. Conditions one and two. Thanks. Sir. That's in the additional material. That's correct. Okay. On that basis, I'll second the motion. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Lilly. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, moving on to item number nine. Um, 10, 
1021 Royal York Road. This is again a matter that we have a, a revised highlighted yellow sheet changes to the initial application. In this case, they're proceeding by way of a waiver. And this is to construct a two story rear addition and ancillary structure, a gazebo in the rear yard. Uh, there are four variances. Uh, two have been revised. We have revised plans, zoning uh, re a review waiver notice, and a cover letter. And in the additional materials, urban forestry is requesting, oh, not an additional, they're requesting uh, condition two. And in additional materials, we have a cover letter and a and photo from um, William Hall, the agent. And uh, the agent is William Hall. That's the only speaker on this application. Welcome, Mr. Hall. Yes, hello. This is Bill Hall from Architrave Design Architect. I'm uh, representing the homeowners on this project. Okay, and we see the revisions you've made to the application. Is that uh, was that was in response to uh, concerns from community planning or? Yes, the, the the revisions came directly from a phone call that I did have with planning staff. They had some slight concerns regarding the overall height variance for the gazebo uh, and for um, the area, the uh, coverage number, um, which most of which is derived from the gazebo itself, which is yeah, just an we, open, open the, structure. Staff, can we have the additional material to cover Mr. Hall's cover letter on the board? And the photo, I believe it's, uh, I believe this is one, it's quite a, uh, okay, is that it? Okay. Okay, uh, members, any questions for uh, Mr. Hall or is someone ready for a motion? Mr. Uh, Taylor, thank you. I wasn't looking yes. up. Yes, Mr. Chair, I'm satisfied that the variances requested meet the four tests under the Planning Act. And I move approval of the revised application subject to urban forestry condition two. Thank you. Seconded for that. Mr. Bellissimo? Bellissimo. Any comment? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hall. See you again. Thank you very much. Okay. Our next application, and maybe after that one, we'll take a, uh, a break. Uh, if that's okay with everyone, item number 10 is uh, 135 Evans Avenue. And. Um, we have two speakers on this, Sean McGaffey, the agent and neighbor 131. So we have a revised, uh, again, a revision page showing changes by way of waiver to this application, which is a, 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 to construct a two-story addition and a second-story addition above the existing dwelling, a detached garage in the rear yard, and to create a secondary suite. And there are There were nine variances. There are now six, two of which have been revised. We have revised plans and the zoning wa waiver notice. Uh, we have the applicant's revisions, an arborist report, and uh, planning uh, is asking for, was asking for, um, we have a planning report on this, asking for modifications, uh, including the, uh, which is shown on their report, including the reduction, perhaps the applicant can go through what he's done and to eliminate variances seven, eight, and nine, and a condition that it contain no more than uh, two dwelling units. The transportation is okay with the application. We have, um, we have no concerns and we have an opposition letter from 131, uh, which is the neighbor we have on the line. Okay, and uh, I did a little comparison of, of the numbers and perhaps just uh, rather than me go through it, the applicant can do that, comparing what the community planning was asking for and what in fact they've done. Um, in the additional materials, I don't need to any additional materials on this. So. Okay, so let's hear from uh, Mr. McGaffey on this matter, and then we'll hear from the neighbor at 131. Hi, good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name's Sean McGaffey. I'm a senior planner and urban designer with WND Associates, and we're working with the applicant, or uh, working with the owner here to assist with the application. Um, the application is for an alteration to the existing one story bungalow to conduct or to construct uh, a new uh, one story addition over top, as well as a two story addition in the rear and a detached private garage in the rear yard. Um, the existing detached private garage will be removed. 
um, since the time of the submission of the application, uh, planning staff reached out to me and we undertook uh, discussions with them regarding uh, some of the variances that you see here. Um, we did update the uh, architectural plans and I prepared this uh, waiver that you see before you on the screen. The FSI was reduced uh, to in, in line with the city planning request of 0 0.59 times the lot area. And as well, they had requested that the building length be reduced from 18.29 to 18, uh, just based on how it worked out with the interior layouts. It ultimately played out to 17.98 meters. And as well, um, we were able to eliminate the variances for driveway width and soft and hard, uh, landscaping and soft landscaping within the front yard. Um, the proposed building has been designed to accommodate um, one dwelling unit as well as a secondary dwelling unit. So we're looking at a single detached house with two dwelling units in it, and we're comfortable with the recommended condition from city planning in that respect. Um, with respect to the built form, the proposed length is consistent with or what you see next door at 133 Evans Avenue, as well as a general pattern of rear yard setbacks and building length within the neighborhood. Um, in terms of the letter of opposition that was filed, I just want to quickly address that. Uh, they had raised concern that this was a three dwelling unit building. I, I can confirm for you that this is two dwelling units and we're comfortable with the city planning condition to that respect. Um, with respect to it being over development or over building of the lot. Um, in, in my opinion, the proposed development on the site is appropriately sized and it provides for amenity areas and landscaping that meets the requirements of the zoning bylaw and as well allows for the introduction of a secondary suite and additional family sized unit on this property. Um, each each uh, unit within the building has a minimum of three bedrooms. Um, with respect to the parking, again, they identify concerns with parking for three dwelling units. There are two dwelling units on this property and each will have access to a private garage parking space. So unit B has a parking space in the proposed detached private garage and unit A has an integral garage uh, position accessed uh, by the proposed driveway. Uh, so with that, I'll just uh, close for you in that um, I reviewed the application against the uh, official plan, the zoning bylaw, as well as the pattern of development within the neighborhood. And I find it's consistent with the four tests of the Planning Act and uh, be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. McGaffey, for that presentation. Also, point out I, I, my notes. Uh, I was there is an urban forestry condition number two, and as well in the addition materials, we received a letter of support from 145 Evans, um, in support of the application. In terms of the comparison, and thanks for going through that. So yeah, you gave an extra point zero two, uh, than they were asking at eighteen compared to you gave seventeen point uh, seven eight with respect to one variance. You are off by just to point out by coverage. They did ask you to go down to thirty six, and I assume you weren't able to do that. You are at thirty seven percent coverage. Based on just the revisions, how it worked out, we're actually at thirty six point nine. So I had kept that at thirty seven. Okay. That being said. If the committee feels strongly about the 36 number, I, I'm sure it could work on the site. Okay, I just wanted to point out, though, so, uh, we'll see if they, anyone has any concerns. Members, any questions oh, uh, for Mr. Uh, McCaffey before we go on to hear from neighbor at 131 who's written in? Okay, so let's hear from uh, Ashley uh, Nord Nordangeli at 131 Evans. Welcome. <laughs> Hi everyone. Good morning. Um, I just had a, a question. Yeah, thank you for reviewing the um, the questions that we had in advance of this meeting. I'm, I apologize. I'm actually on the phone, so I can't see the screen or anything like that. So I have nothing to refer to um, minus what's in front of me. So um, uh, the garage in the back is that? Are you not building a unit on top of the existing garage? Sorry, it's not a uh, back and forth question. You make a submission, he'll answer in his, his, he'll answer after you've had what you had to say. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, my apologies. Yeah, yeah so the, the way you, read, your letter, you You seem to think there's a, an additional unit going in. Correct, it looks like an additional unit is going in over the garage and therefore thus rendering, I believe, an R3 zoning versus an R1 zoning. Um, Thank you for speaking to the, the the parking that's been answered. Um, 
oh, there's just concern that it is a three, it's moving, sorry, it's a three family dwelling versus a second, um, sorry, two additional units with an existing single family dwelling. So it's more than a secondary suite is what the um, concern is. And that just speaks to everything else in terms of the congestion and the um, lot size that is being developed um, in our neighborhood. Okay. Uh, any members, any questions for um, for the neighbor? Uh, Nard and Jelly, and I hope I pronounced that okay. Um, <laughs> you did not, but don't worry about it. Nobody does. <laughs> that's, unless it's spelled wrong on my list. It's N A R D A N G L E L I. Um, yes, Nardan. So, if you have any questions, we'll let Mr. Uh, Dal Mr. Uh, McAfee respond uh, to what you've had to say. Perhaps can that there is going to be two units, sir. Oh, just to unmute it there. Thank you, uh, and, and thanks for the the comments. Uh, you know, I hope I can put your mind at ease here, and that I'll, I'll confirm that there is no unit proposed over the detached garage. It has a uh, a height of three point nine six meters, and it's just to accommodate a, a single parking space. And as well, just with respect to the size of the secondary suite. It does meet the typical zoning bylaw, like 45% versus 55% allocation. Um, and you know, while it is generously sized, I would say for a secondary suite, it nonetheless provides for um, a, a secondary dwelling unit that meets the zoning bylaw. And, and again, we are accepting of the conditions uh, from city planning with respect to the number of dwelling units on the site. Right, yeah, they've asked that as a condition. Okay, uh, members, any questions, follow up questions uh, uh, for Ms. McGaffey or, or for the neighbor for that matter, or is someone ready to weigh in with a motion? Danny Bidism is ready to weigh in with a motion if there are no further questions. Um, I find that the variances are minor in nature for approval, subject to the conditions by planning state May 25th. Variances. Number one will be to 36 percent. Variance number two, 0.59. Variance yes. number three, 18 meters. Variance number seven and eight and nine. Front yard south is going to be eliminated. And variance and number five, condition it's condition five, that the proposed development shall have no more than two dwelling units. I believe that covers all the. Uh, it's, conditions. it's condition one, but it's number five on the planning report. So the only matter I don't know if you've given some thought to. As I pointed out uh, in my, uh, is that he, in fact he's only reduced it to 0.37. Uh, staff was asking for 0.36. He said he could make it work. That's the way the numbers came out. So I just wanted you to make sure you addressed your mind to that number. Uh, whether yes, you're yes, that's point. Uh, planning calls it 36 percent, and the, rec the recommendation is 0.36. So I yeah, and he said he would uh, agreeable make it work. So I'd like to leave planning's recommendations as they stand, and uh, okay. add the condition by forestry. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to make sure you brought your, you put your mind to that. That in fact yes. he was not able to, but he said he could make it work. Yes. Okay, I second for that motion. Ms. Reddick, all in favor? Okay, you have unanimous approval. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You to uh, the neighbor for uh, coming on the line and letting us know what her concerns are. Uh, I think they've been addressed. So item number. Oh yeah. So we were going to take a. Uh, I think we're way ahead of schedule. We only have 18 matters. Uh, typically we have 20 in the morning. We only have 18, and I think we're ahead of schedule. We're going to finish. So how about we have a uh, break until 10:45? Uh, 11 minute break. If that's okay with everyone, I guess it's okay with Danny. He's gone already. Thank you. Okay. So we'll see everyone back here at uh, about 11 minutes.
did I let you know how many inches it should be? Sam, two question mark. Michael, you're unmuted. Oh, sorry, I'm just responding. Thank you. Just responding to a text here.
Okay, welcome, uh, welcome back. Okay, so. Okay, um, everyone's ready to get started. The next application is item 11. Uh, 190 Delta Street, so an application to construct a second story addition above the existing dwelling, a new south side addition. Uh, no south side, sorry, attached garage, a new rear deck, and a new front porch. And there are uh, four variances to the bylaw. And we have nothing whatsoever on this file, uh, including the additional materials. Speaker is Daniel Cheatley, the uh, agent for the owner. Good morning, committee members. Good morning. Uh, I don't have, um, have a presentation. Um, I think the variances are are minor um, in nature. Uh, it's about our proposal. Okay, uh, I was going to say the same thing. It's very straightforward, four very uh, small variances, and there's no comment from anyone. Members, any uh, questions, or is someone ready to weigh in with a motion? Andy Bidesmo is ready to weigh in with a motion to turn over the questions. I find the drawing. Very nice and very simple, uh, elegant uh, design. Uh, I find the variances are minor in nature. I move uh, for approval. I believe there are no conditions. Okay, thank you. Seconded for that, Ms. Reddick, thank you. Any comment? All in favor? Thank you very much, everyone. It's unanimous. Thank you, sir. You have your, uh, Mr. Cheedley, we'll see you again. Thank you, have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Next application is item number 12, 18, uh, Stock Bridge. Uh, this is to construct a first floor north side addition, a second story addition to the existing dwelling and interior alterations. There are um, seven variances of the bylaw. Uh, Urban Forestry is looking for condition number two. And again, we have nothing whatsoever on file. Thanks to two easy applications after coming back from the break. Uh, Rick Bongers is the speaker. Mr. Bongers, welcome. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Yes, good morning. Uh, I don't believe we need a presentation, very straightforward application, notwithstanding the large number of variances. Um, here to overall be minor. Would you like to advise the committee uh, members of anything before I see if they have any questions? Uh, no, I feel the application represents a suitable development of the property and is appropriate for the neighborhood. Okay. Members, you agree? Any questions? Or someone ready to weigh in? Mr. Taylor. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm satisfied. The requested variances meet the four tests under the Planning Act, and I move approval subject to urban forestry condition two and the condition requested by the Community Planning Department. Oh, did I miss that? I may open my. I believe I believe you did. Um... No, there's nothing from planning. Okay, then I withdraw that. Just subject only to urban forestry condition two. Yeah, I think you're one application ahead of us. I'm just looking at. Oh, my probably. Notes. Thank you. Okay, a seconded for Mr. Taylor's motion, Mr. Palmer. Thank you. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay, item number 13 is um, 80 Edgecroft Road. We have a revised uh, notice uh, page, agenda page with showing highlighted changes. It's an application to construct a two story rear addition, a two story east side addition, and the second story addition above the existing dwelling. There were uh, six variances. Um, there still are. Five have been revised. We have revised plans. We have the zoning review waiver uh, from the applicant, a cover letter, three letters of opposition from 78, 84, and 85 Edgecroft. Uh, we have planning looking for a condition of approval uh, to be built substantially in accordance with the architectural plans regarding the front yard setback, the flat roof height and parapet height. So. Uh, that's what community planning is looking for. We do have the letters of opposition. We have three speakers. The first being the agent, Giorgio Lolos, uh, and then neighbors from 78 and 85 
uh, Edgecroft, two of who have both written in with letters. So let's uh, start off with uh, Mr. Lolos, agent for the applicant. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, members of staff. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Good morning. Um, yes, we have um, made some modifications uh, working with the planning department to uh, satisfy their concerns as far as front yard setback, uh, um, parapet heights where they, they claim the parapet heights, but we speak generally say that it's a flat roof height that's actually a technical sort of um, condition here. Um, building depth, front yard setback, and with those conditions, we actually modified the uh, coverage as well. Uh, reduce a little bit of the coverage uh, and the FSI. Um, again, working with an existing condition, an existing dwelling, trying to modify and work with the bylaws sometimes is very difficult to work with, especially conditions that are that you can't physically just re rework. Uh, having said that, we did modify to, to, to the client's expense, reducing some of the existing floor structure of the existing dwelling, uh, actually reduced it in depth, so we're actually removing it and lowering it just so we can comply and, and work with the, uh, the planning department to reduce the overall heights. Um, but as a matter of fact, I mean, the overall height here is only established because basically the design of the home is a modern design home. Um, if this had a conventional roof line, uh, pitched roof and so forth, we wouldn't be discussing any, any of the height variances that we have in front of us today. So again, working with the existing condition, existing home, trying to work with the bylaws and try to facilitate the client's needs and homeowners needs these days. We are faced with these bylaws with, uh, with, with these, um, minor variances with alterations to them as presented today. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, members, anyone have any questions for Mr. Lolos at this time? Uh, if not, we'll hear from the two neighbors and uh, he'll have a chance to respond. No questions at this time? Okay, so we'll go here from uh, Mara Lebobs at 78 Edgecroft and perhaps we can get her letter on the board as uh, up on the screen while she's making her presentation. It's, I believe it's the first uh, letter. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. You're going to bring my letter up? Yes, I've okay, asked. Thanks. For I like the way you set it out in boxes like that. It's much easier to read. <laughs> I should have um, done that on my, my exams and uh, back in school 40 years ago. Oh, right. Anyway, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank um, you. I'm wondering, is it possible for us neighbors to get copies of the uh revised plans well they're up uh, i assume they were filed and they're up on the uh they're in our package you mean to get a copy like right now or no no um just uh, for future reference i think that we neighbors would probably like to get together and have a look at the revised plans they are posted to aic yeah. so you'll be able to view them there all right okay thank you and they're nice and clear, at least on my my computer. So oh, good. We'll All right. Yeah, I, I, I see. But uh, today is uh, decision making time, so it's time for you to make your presentation based on your letter. Right. Uh, and you know you can get the plans in due course, but it looks like uh, okay decision is going to be made today. So I'm I'm concerned about item number three, which is the um, minimum required side yard setback, which uh, is supposed to be 1.2 meters. And the um, proposed alter dwelling, alter dwelling is to be um, 0.93 meters from the uh, property line. I, I need easement. I need space because uh, on that side, uh, my oil tank gets filled. I have an air conditioner. I may need uh, repairs and so on. And I'm concerned that 0.93 meters won't be enough. Yeah, ma'am, do you have 1.2 on your side or more than that? Do you know what you have on, you know, you have a shared side yard. So on, on, on your side with the neighbor, are you providing the appropriate 1.2 or just wondering if it's too narrow? Is that occasion partially as a request? A request? I, I'm concerned that it's too narrow. Right. I'm just asking just for the record, is your side yard compliant on that side? Do you give um, your neighbor the 1.2? I'm just asking him not. Right. right. I believe it is. I, I'm sorry. I haven't measured it. I okay, should have. We can, we can look at the survey, but okay. I understand. So you're, you're not happy with variance number three. Yes. Reason. Okay. So the additional, you would like the additional uh, 0.27. Uh, 
uh, to comply with the bylaw. Okay, anything and what else? Please. Um, uh, I'm also concerned that. about uh, the height of the parapet. Uh, I don't understand why. I, I think the parapet wall is intended to be uh, at least seven feet high. Basically, this would be like a, 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 according to my understanding, a wall all around the flat roof. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, sorry, I don't answer your questions. You make your statement, and then the, the applicant okay. will, will All apply. right. Well, I am concerned about the the height of the parapet wall. If it's going to be all the way around the top of the flat roof, um, why does it have to be that that tall? Is it going to be? What's the purpose of it? And uh, uh, basically, that's it, I guess. Uh, the rest of my comments are uh, in my letter. Okay. And again, thank you. So, uh, members, do you have any questions for the neighbor um, based on her presentation and uh, her letter? Okay. And uh, if none, then we'll hear from the other neighbor and then we'll go back to, uh, to the applicant or the agent for his rebuttal. So, the next neighbor is... Um, either Peter or Trudy Hebs at 85 Edgecroft. And again, they've written in, we can get their letter up on the board. Yeah, this is Gertrude speaking, Trudy. Um, yes, I just wanted to mention, we were concerned when we saw the plans, we're not architects and we're not draftsmen, but when we saw the plans uh, sent to us, we were concerned that it was a multi-living dwelling um, because we note that there's six washrooms in the plans. And the other concern is with six, um, you know, uh, with a multi-dwelling, we have uh, driveway concerns because they're very close to 78. Um, with looking at the height of the garage, um, it looks like it's only a one garage. So that means they'll have one car inside and then two cars outside on the parking pad. And is that including like a soft, a soft, um, you know, landscape? Because will they extend for parking? And also because of the noise, if, if it is a dwelling that is multi-dwelling as opposed to single, the proposal was for a single dwelling. Is that the end of your, what you'd like to say, ma'am? Yes, and you'll see the the rest of the comments and views for the variances there. Yeah, we have your letter and then the members have all reviewed it. Okay, does any any of the members have any questions uh, uh, for Ms. Ms. Hebs uh, before we go back and uh, hear from, uh, yeah, we have a third letter, but that person is not present. That's the neighbor at 84. So we have the third letter of opposition as well. Um, so if no none of the members have any questions, we'll go back to George Lolos for his rebuttal to uh, what the neighbors have had to say. Okay, Mr. Lolos. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so, okay, let's let's say first and foremost identify this classification of the parapet. A parapet is basically technically it's a it's a it's a strip of it's a wall it's a short wall that's actually above the roof line, overlapping the perimeter of any any sort of flat roof system. That's the classification of a parapet. In this case here, it's it's different, and I had a discussion with a examiner about this thing here, how he classified it. But unfortunately, they all have the levels of interpretation, and of course, it's just what it is according to what their his classification is. But let's be the truth of the matter is simply this: this roof this is a, it's actually a roof system. Then that's that's actually the height of the roof system at the top of the roof canopy or the rough the roof itself and it's only at the very very back of the, the dwelling and that itself encompasses only 12 of the 12.97 percent of the overall roof line so that's what we're asking for as far as this classification of the paraffin height and that's actually under the old bylaws or regulations accordingly so i mean we're only asking for a small percentage of, of the actually of the roof system that's the very very back of the property in respect to the side yard setback, our neighbor's setback at 78 is 1.47 meters. We're asking for 0.98 because, again, we're working with an existing side wall of the building that's already intact. Under existing condition, we have to conform and, and, and suggest, propose a garage that has a minimum interior width 
that according to the bylaw, we can't go less now because we will, we don't want to activate another variance. Therefore, the distance from the existing dwelling to the, to that side yard setback, the proposed interior garage width required, and the exterior wall thickness allows us only a 9.98 meter differences. Now, again, that's only the portion of the garage wall. The balance of the building towards the back, the first floor, it has the, the, the maximum required um, of 1.2 and 1.24. And only a small section of the second story at the rear of the building has a proposal of 0.98 again. In relation to the uh, is there the, the opposition 85, um, this is a single family dwelling, always will be. It's a single car garage, and we have a front yard parking pad that, that is, complies with the bylaws to allow any parking services that we need. We comply with the landscaping issues, so therefore we're, we're in conformity with the bylaw under those conditions. Um, noise reductions, I don't know. I mean, he's going to have a young teenager and he wants to level his car. That's really, I can't, we can't control those kind of entities or conditions. That's okay. it, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, and obviously, for the neighbors to realize that uh, you were obviously okay with that, that the the planning department has asked as a condition of approval that they be uh, built you know, substantially uh, constructed as illustrated on the architectural plans with respect to all those matters, the front yard setback, the flat roof, the overall height and the parapet height. We agree with us, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, in that case, any questions? Okay, Mr. Lolos has responded. I guess that's his response. Any questions for Mr. Lolos or any follow-up questions for either the two neighbors? Uh, or if not, is someone ready to uh, uh, weigh in with a motion? Uh, yeah. So I would like to ask a few questions. If we have to Could staff put up drawing elevation? Front elevation is drawing A12. Yes, thank you. Uh, so my question, sir, is uh, I noticed that you've been you you haven't mentioned this, but your grades start at established grade, which is the new regulation, and as such, you have greater height because of the starting points. Is that correct? Correct. Sir. Also, the parapet at the front is 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 not part of the variance. You're saying the also this elevation the parapet is not. Or the variance is that what you were saying in your explanation? I couldn't understand that. Well, the, the, the again, it says a classification of the parapet itself is is subject to all parapets are subject to um, a thirty centimeter increase above any sort of roof decking itself. But we we respectfully respect that. That's we identified it to the top of the parapet as generally sense. Um, the roof canopy itself, the flat roof itself, is is, is is fifteen centimeters lower than the top of the parapet. So correct, yes. Okay, as so we'll identify. That parapet, which we call a stub wall, yes, is, uh, is fine at the front. And then you sent in another drawing that showed the roof plan, and that's the parapet at the that that's the one that has the parapet that's a little bit higher, and that's at the back. Well, they're both they're both. It shows the illustration of the roof system itself in relation to the parapet perimeters and the actual uh, flat roof sections itself. And we highlighted the area in the back, which is a higher area. Out of just under thirty percent, which is the very, very back portion of the dwelling. That, thank you for for submitting that because we normally don't get that clarification, but that's that's good. So I can see the two two inch slopes, and then I can see that rear parapet as the issue. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. Hey, thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. Anyone else have any questions for either the applicant or the neighbors, or is someone ready to make a motion? Danny, but this one's ready to make a motion if there are no further questions. Uh, I find as a, as a modern house, and as a result, these other variances do come up because of that. But that is the trend these days for a lot of architects and homeowners, uh, simplicity. Uh, so I'd like to move to find that the variances are minor in nature and subject to the condition by planning that uh, 
Development be constructed as illustrated in architectural plan submitted May 24, 2022, and held on file by the Committee of Adjustment as it relates to the front yard setback, flat roof height, and parapet height. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Bellissimo, for that motion. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Mr. Taylor, thank you. Any comment? All in favor? You have unanimous approval. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lolos, and thank you to the neighbors. I uh, trust you've heard the explanations from the neighbor about that. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Have a great day. Hey, you too. Uh, okay, our next application is item number 14. We have one speaker for that one. Uh, it is 51 Yorkdale uh, Crescent. We have revised plans showing uh, changes that have been made. There, uh, this is for a second to all to this is to construct a second story rear addition with a rooftop patio, uh, a rear deck, and interior alterations to the existing dwelling. There were six variances, uh, uh, we now have only two lot coverage and the a north lot side yard uh, setback. And, um, four have been eliminated in the additional materials we have a notice from the housing zoning building examiner dated may 31st 2022 perhaps we'll whether that has uh anything to do with anything here uh and um that is all we have we only have the one speaker so uh perhaps uh we can hear something about we also looks like we have a support petition and uh planning is asking for refusal of uh variance of, we had the planning report asking for the refusal of the variances that have now been eliminated so that was uh sort of predated and the applicant has uh come forward as well as we have uh, a petition in support don't know if that was before or after they made the changes but we do have the petition of support in our package uh let's hear from tino citron uh citroniti the agent uh, good morning everybody good morning sir um, yes, so initially our plan was to construct a uh, second floor uh, rear addition with a rooftop patio. Um, but as per discussions with the community planner and as the uh, zoning certificate from our previous architectural drawings, um, uh, we had made the following changes to the three variances that you guys see and uh, removed the rooftop patio. Um, there was two boxes up there also for like an entrance and exit to the rooftop patio and a storage and that's all been removed and right now we only have the uh two minor variances there which is the lot coverage and the side yard setback um the uh, side yard setback is actually an existing uh, variance there and the garage or sorry the maximum uh lock coverage there was 32 percent and the existing was actually 36 percent and we had cut down the garage about eight feet to get to that 32 percent um uh, so it's basically those two minor variances there okay thank you so, so you've eliminated the rooftop patio uh, in, it, just curious i guess it doesn't you you have six letters of support or a petition from six yeah. people oh yeah that was bad i was going to ask you if it was before or after you made the changes but i see it was obviously before because they're days eight yeah. second. exactly so papers were okay with the rooftop patio but uh planning was not okay um any questions for uh mr uh citronini or is someone ready to weigh in with a motion Mr. Taylor, too. Hey, Mr. Chair, I'm satisfied that the revised application meets the four tests under the Planning Act, and I move approval again of the revised application um, without conditions. Okay, thank you. Second of that, Mr. Palmer. Thank you. All in favor. We have unanimous approval. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Too. Bye bye. Okay. Item number 15, 59 Lake Promenade. 
Mr. Chairman, uh, on this, this on this item, uh, we have the owner, uh, Inder Saini, present, and Andy Choles. Is Sahil Jaggi? But okay, sorry, we have all speakers present. Sorry about the interruption. Yeah, all speakers. Okay. Thank you. Not a problem. Okay, 59 Lake Promenade, an application to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. There are six variances. We have community planning, uh, urban forestry looking for uh, conditions two and five. They're looking for a refusal, uh, denying a variance number one in their memo dated June 1st. And in their memo dated May 31st, uh, they didn't object. So we'll perhaps want some clarification of that. We have four letters of support. Planning is looking for three conditions of approval. We have the Long Branch uh, Character Guideline Checklist completed. We have a cover letter from the uh, home, homeowner with pictures, a very uh, wholesome presentation of that. And uh, they advise, uh, again, I don't know why we didn't have it in our materials, but they advise that in March 10, 2022, they were before committee and they lost on a three to two vote. Uh, due to the side yard, they say, which has now been removed. I don't know. I don't believe we had a copy of that in our, unless I missed it in our in our package. Obviously, it should have been there. So thanks to the applicant for pointing that out. It gives us a good starting point for dealing with this application. And we do have three speakers, as uh, the moderator advised. Uh, let's hear first from the owner. Then we'll hear from the owner, at, uh, the neighbor at 93 Lake Promenade, and then from Andy Choles on behalf of the Long Branch Neighborhood Association. Mr. Saini, welcome. Good morning. Hi, my name is uh, Inder Saini, and I'm the homeowner for 59 Lake Promenade. Um, I did provide a presentation that you may have access to. Um, yeah, I will be just on the screen. Yeah, yeah, I mentioned that in my uh, coverage, and it was quite uh, comprehensive. So uh, let's see if the some pictures and charts and everything. So if we can please uh, put that up on the screen as you're uh, as you're speaking. And again, uh, thank you for doing that. It was very well done. Thank you. Yeah. So it's a labeled as cover letter. And uh, I just want to open that we've been working with TRCA, our architect, and our neighbors, and the City of Toronto for almost two years on this site. So all of whom have approved and supported the design as we presented. Um, like we said, we previously had come to committee and since then we have reduced our variances significantly and there are only four city variances of minor nature to consider in our application. I mean, since we've acquired the home in 2020, knowing the site would need extensive upgrades, we just want to highlight the state of the, the site since we have acquired it. I mean, urban forestry does note that there's trees being removed, but we, a tree is not always a tree. If you have context, like this is one of the trees that we have noted that's being removed. Um, if you can go to the next photos, just shows you the, the, the poor condition of the bluff and the previous owner just did not spend the time, money or effort to kind of keep the site up to state. And so that's what we're here to do. Um, there's no erosion plan in place and without the removal of the home, we can't bring in the extensive equipment required to be able to actually do the repairs. So when we started our design, we submitted multiple coastal engineering reports and were peer reviewed by the TRCA to support our shoreline protection plan and our adjusted hazard limit. So before we even decided any design work, the TRCA first approved our hazard limits and is comfort uh, comfortable with the size of the house in relation to the shoreline uh, hazard limit. The end of the house is approximately 28 meters away from the top of the bank, as the survey uh, shows, and is a significant distance in comparison to some of the other homes in the neighborhood. Uh, we also note that the distance from the hazard line to the edge of the house is drawn to uh, be about 0.8 meters, but the distance of the actual building starting point where the one story portion of the house is starting is 3.66 meters from the hazard line and 8.1 meters from the stable slope allowance. Again, the TRCA was comfortable with these setbacks for safety purposes for the erosion allowance. And again, like we said, we spent over $50,000 and almost 18 months during COVID to kind of get to where we are today. So I just want to give people context that we have spent a ton of time, money, effort, and living in a home that <laughs> is in really, really poor condition, but uh, that's what it kind of takes to get through this process. And so we're here. In regards to the variances themselves, um, we have four minor variances that we just want to highlight. One is regarding the height. Um, it's 9.93 meters. Um, in regards to some of the other heights in the neighborhood, I mean, we're talking about 4% from the, the standard requirement, um, or about 1.4 feet um, in regards to the maximum building length. Uh, again, it's only in regards to uh, uh, 1.97 meters of the one-story portion in the back of the home 
versus some of the other sites that have actually been approved for double story lengths at both levels. So we believe the length variance is minor in comparison to the alternative of a double story variance previously issued and supported by this committee. Um, in regards to the FSI, uh, this is a common misnomer. I mean, urban forestry has flagged it. Uh, I know the uh, Long Branch Association has flagged it, but it's a misnomer because the table land is by over 20 meters because of the shoreline allowance in calculating FSI. As we previously noted, we're almost 28 meters from the top of the bank, and the updated FSI now shows 0.88, which is in line with numerous other homes that were passed in the committee, but significantly smaller than other homes on the water side that have previously been approved as well. And in the city's planning report, if the entire lot were used in calculating the FSI, it would actually be 0.45 times coverage, which would be a minor difference from the maximum FSI permitted. And um, we also note that uh, besides houses on the lake, other homes have been passed in the neighborhood with significantly higher FSI, and they don't have the table land that we have. So we show that we have 28 meters in the back and nine meters in the front of the house. And so our house is a considerably smaller footprint than some of the other lake promenade sites. And so I just want to highlight uh, on the next page that since we've started this process, um, we originally had 11 variances. We worked with the city, we worked with the planners, and we've reduced them significantly. And so the, these are the main four that we're looking for. There are no objections from the TRCA, no objections from city planning. And we went through the, the process of discussing with both our adjacent neighbors and got letters of support from both of them. And they've signed off on this application as well. Um, and so, yeah, so, I mean, in summary, we spent over two years and significant expense to kind of achieve the design that's being presented today. I am not an architect or a city planner by any means, but I'm an accountant. But I've, as you can see, I have spent a ton of time to reflect that uh, the numerous changes in our original submission to meet the qualities of the neighborhood. And we've taken no shortcuts here and we're trying to adhere to all the guidelines and administration that have been thrown at us, despite all these significant costs and delays in our family situation, but uh, we think the design meets the four tests and achieves the goals of our growing family for today and the next several decades that we would like to live here for. Thank you. Um, sir, before you go on, I just want to tell you uh, you're an accountant, but maybe you could have a future career as a planner. It's a wonderful report. It's easy to read compared to some of the uh, the, the planning reports that we do, you know, the reports we do get from, from agents. Um, and again, you're, you have, you gone through your whole two year uh, journey journey on this and it's an important one because you are steward so you're one of the people in the city fortunate enough to live on the lake and i think you take that seriously and uh, it looks like the city is supportive they actually mentioned they were supportive last time in their planning report and they do point out uh, con to confirm that it actually would be at 0.45 uh, percent rather than the 0.88 so let's hear from what the, does anyone else have any, any questions or comments for uh, for the agent? I see most Mr. Bellissimo and Palmer have their hand up before we move on uh, to hear from the neighbors and what their position is on this. Um, Mr. Sani, right? Yes, uh, yes. Can I just get clarification? In our uh, additional material we had that you submitted revisions June 6th, and uh, I can't tell what the revisions are. Do they affect any of the variances that you have requested? They, they do not. So how? Uh, they do not. Um, so the two revisions were actually to remove the platforms. Um, they're bubbled in A5 as well as in A6. And so we reduced the platform sizes on the second and the third floor. And so the zoning certificate matches up with the updated design. Uh, we let the city know that as well. Um, and so that those are the only two minor changes. We've asked for no additional variances. And in fact, we actually reduced on any platform variances. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Bellissimo. Uh, sorry, that, that was 100% the, the same question that I was going to ask because I, I was confused about why we got revised plans just yesterday, but that question has been answered. Yeah, it was a very minor change. That was the only change we made, and it was actually to simplify the design. And we confirmed that it does tie back to the zoning certificate provided in the file. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, we can move on now. Uh, Mr. Bellissimo, any further questions? Does anyone else have any other questions? Mr. Bellissimo, you're... Well, I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah, that, I just had that one question. Okay. Okay. So we have two other speakers. Uh, the first one is Sahil Jaggi from 93 Lake Promenade. Looks about eight properties uh, to the west. Um, 
Mr. Jaggy, please uh, let us know what your concerns are, if any. Uh, thank you, committee members, for hearing me out uh, today. 93 Lake Promenade, I'm the homeowner. Uh, I'm actually here in support of this project at 59 Lake Promenade. Uh, and I guess the intention is to, I, I've been through the process myself. Uh, I know what it takes, the effort that it takes. Uh, so I really want to commend the neighbor. He actually came knocking on my door, explaining the plans. And, um, and, and like I said, going through departments like TRCA and planning and the fact that they've done the revisions and the reductions. Uh, I think it'll be a wonderful home and a great addition to the street uh, and very much in line with the precedents that the other homes on the street are. So uh, at this point, uh, I would just like to uh, thank the neighbor for all the efforts that they've made, because again, I know what it takes to go through the process, uh, especially when you have uh, a house on the lake and to protect the shorelines and we're all here to live in the long run, and the new generation coming in. and. Uh, the fact that he's building a new wall and going through the process, I would really like to show my support and uh, would request the committee to approve the application. Very well said, Mr. Jaggy. Thank you for uh, you know coming on and being supportive and understanding the difficulties, like you say, of uh, lakefront property. You're in a very you know unique and special and uh, position dealing with the environment and the shoreline. So thank you. Exactly. And now, no last, problem. does anyone of anyone else has mentioned? has any questions for Mr. Jaggi, but let's move over to Mr. Scholes with the Long Branch Neighborhood Association. Mr. Scholes. Good morning. Thumbs up, thumbs down on this. Uh, not quite as supportive as Mr. Jaggi. My, my name is Andy Scholes. I live at uh, 12 Jasmine Avenue, about a block north of this property. I'm a board member of the LBNA, and I'm here to speak in opposition again against this plan build for 59 Promenade. This so application seems to be lacking in substantive changes from the previous submission. The applicant has reduced the number of variances, but the most recent zoning notice doesn't mention the lack of viable planting space on the lot. The list of variants on the previous application included the bylaw requirement of that, that 60% of the front yard must be landscaped and 75% of that area must be soft landscaped. The three forestry reports of June 2nd point out that the lack of planting space, as well as the destruction of a healthy Norway maple tree, Forestry points out the excessive FSI and the location of the building causes the loss of this tree. I would add that a healthy sugar maple tree on the property is also in peril. The applicants offered to remove five full-size trees and replace them with three saplings on the property and five or six more trees planted off-site really is unacceptable. The tree canopy in our area will be sacrificed for the sake of an overly large house. Forestry asks for a denial. The FSI of the proposed house of home has been reduced, but it is still 0 0.88, two and a half times the max of the FSI of 0 0.35 for the area. Every applicant on the south side of Lake Promenade complains that the formula for cal calculating FSI for lakefront property is skewed, leaving them at a disadvantage. I've said it before, it would be very helpful if the city would make some sort of a definitive ruling on calculating FSI on waterfront property. As it stands, the FSI for this property is an overly large 0 0.88 as far as this COA hearing goes. The applicant's cover letter cites some very interesting examples to justify the variances on this property. Usually when considering the application of homes on the same side, we look at homes at the same side or opposite side of the street in the same block, considering to establish a prevailing pattern. Some examples of homes listed by the applicant in the letter are located just outside Long Branch in New Toronto. One more is in Sunny Lee. If the reason for these were included to show that there's overbills everywhere, I'm in full agreement, but the Long Branch character guidelines, which are clarifications of the official plan 320, are only adopted for the Long Branch community. Some of the examples were in Long Branch, a few of them were on Lake Promenade, which might seem most applicable. The home on 91 Lake Prom uses an example on two of the lists. This home is was rejected by the COA panel three times and is now scheduled to be heard at the T-Lab. Number 139 Lake Prom was hotly contested by the LBNA, as were most of these builds listed. One interesting example was 11 James, included for the excessive building length. The proposed 11 James home was long, but had somewhat of a more tolerable FSI of 0 0.499 and was built around a number of trees on the property. Now, the LBNA is not in the habit of going on record of actually endorsing any build before this COA, but the effort of the 11 James applicant made to preserve trees was truly appreciated by the LBNA and neighbors alike. If the 59 Lake Prom, prom uh, applicant could come up with a similar design, we might be in a position to look upon it more favorably. 
I've said before in previous hearings that the Lake Promenade is a very special tr street in Long Branch. It is part of the waterfront bike trail well used by cyclists. It is part of the Cross Canada Great Trail. Views of the lake from the public realm must be preserved and not blocked by crowding of oversized houses onto the lots. The tree canopy must be maintained. The LBNA is fully aware that some housing stock is in need of renewal. We aren't blocking that effort, but we strive to have sensitive development of properties that will enhance the character of the neighborhood and keep the tree canopy, which is such an important part of our community. These trees were here well before we were born and the newly built homes will be will likely outlive all of us. It is important to decide carefully on what's best for the neighborhood past this owner. The LBNA would request this application right. for 59 Lake Promenade be refused. If not refused, deferred until further changes can be made. The proposed build is too large for the property, will result in the destruction of a magnificent Norway maple as well as other trees. Lack of plantable space in the front yard will be detrimental to the prevalence of open, well landscaped yards, which are to this area. Should the house be built, it will continue the undesirable trend of oversized homes being built along Lake Promenade. I would ask you to stick by your decision of March the 10th and turn down this application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scholz. Um, just to recognize the decision uh, last time was a three to two split. It was apparently due to the side yards, which have been eliminated. So, and planning advice, they were okay with it. Um, I was really, I really thought maybe you were going to be supportive of this this time, but. Um, it anyway. is large and it we're losing itself. trees. Yeah, it speaks for itself, but, um, you know, try to be very objective with your association in the last three years. And this one, I'm rather sort of disappointed. The applicant's worked for two years. He's satisfied planning. He's satisfied every neighbor. So I'm a little disappointed. I don't know what the other members feel. Uh, the, um, other, the other the neighbors on uh, 91 and 93 okay. have gone through the same thing. We've I'm gone not through... asking you to sort of defend your position. Okay. Uh, it is what it is. It um, is. Members, any comments or um, questions for Mr. Charles? And if, or, and if not, let's go back to Mr. Sani for his rebuttal. Okay. Oh, I thought Mr. Bellissima had his hand up. Okay, uh, let's go back to Mr. Um, Mr. Sani. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. In my cover letter, if you actually go to the last part, I actually address the arborist report and the trees and all of this because we again have spent a ton of time. So Mr. Choles talks about. Uh, trees being protected. Uh, if you go to the uh, appendices in my cover letter, so they're about 20 pages in. Yeah, if you go up a little bit, uh, a little bit higher, these are the trees that are being noted of being removed just for context. So they're not adding to the canopy of the city. These trees are basically dead. One is a white ash that already is noted by the city. I have an exemption for these are the kinds of trees that we are removing and replacing with healthier trees that are going to be replanted on site as well. Um, at the end of the day, there was a tree. There was one city tree at the front that had brittle cinder fungus. The city came and removed it at their own expense because it was so deteriorated and in such poor shape. There's one tree in the back here that also has brittle cinder fungus that's being removed. There is one healthy tree that is being removed on site. I would like to note that um, if you go to the, the picture at the end, I'll just walk you through the one maple tree that is being removed. Um, a couple more pages, please. Yeah. So I, I would like to note that one maple tree being removed is approximately one foot adjacent to the current home. It's in the back. It, it, it's a, a butts between my neighbor and myself, but it is on my site. There's numerous trees that in our neighborhood that have fallen down to strong winds and are near the lake where the winds go up to 100 kilometers an hour. The tree is adjacent to our bedroom right now and risks a safety issue to the house. The tree roots are already digging into the foundation and our neighbors could be impacted as well. The tree, uh, the adjacent tree six has already been removed as noted due to brittle cinder fungus. And it's a matter of time before this tree would have it as well. And due to the proximity, it's actually allowing squirrels and raccoons to climb up onto our roof. And the squirrels and raccoons that aren't able to burrow a hole. And so that window that I'm circling right now, that's under my daughter's room right now. So with are crawling into the wall, <laughs> then it, uh, they were crawling through. And then it, for over two weeks, they were in, stuck in the wall. And this caused significant concern for her safety, the animal safety. We had to hire a roofer. We had to do emergency repairs. We had to get a wildlife expert for the safe removal of the animals that got stuck. So despite the, <laughs> like, in spite of development, we, we, we still have to remove this tree. Even if we were doing anything else, we would still recommend moving this tree. So we want to reiterate that our project, the net impact is that we're actually going to be planting eight healthy trees and adding to the canopy of city of Toronto and no city trees are being affected anymore. So it's not like we haven't done everything possible here to kind of put best effort. So. 
Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Sani, for uh, defending your your position. Uh, any other any questions for Mr. Sani based on his rebuttal or his presentation or on to Mr. Choles or the neighbor, Mr. Jaggy, uh, or is someone ready to weigh in with the motion? And uh, please, I'd like to have some comments with one's motion. Mr. Taylor, thank you. Yes, thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, I share your disappointment in the LBNA's uh, conclusion about this application. I think the applicant has gone, uh, taken great strides to uh, improve the proposal, and he's gleaned a lot of neighborhood support. I'm also disappointed in the LBNA. Um, they, they, they tend to, um, I'll call it failure to totally disclose facts. Uh, they, they reference the urban forestry recommendation to refuse this application, but don't acknowledge that later on in their brief report, uh, they, uh, they're prepared to, to uh, go with uh, their condition number two with regard to private trees. I'm disappointed again that there was no acknowledgement by the LBNA who knows this process uh, almost as well as, if not as well as we do, uh, about soft landscaping space. There's no variances requested for landscaping space. Um, FSI, uh, again, LBNA concern about lack of policy regarding uh, top of bank. However, um, it, it, is, it is a factor and it's certainly a factor in my motion, which is uh, coming up right now. Um, I find this, uh, these requested variances meet the um, four tests under the Planning Act. And I move approval subject to the urban forestry condition two and the um, community planning conditions. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. And thank you for those comments. Um, <clears throat> seconder for that motion. Again, the lesson was seconded. I just want to clarify the conditions by planning are related to the drawing June 6, 2022. And the report was sent June 7 by the planner, just so we clarify that uh, those conditions, they have been changed. <clears throat> New date, June 7. And the conditions also speak to uh, lighting and bird friendly design. Yes. It's in the additional materials. Yes, that's the additional. It's just, I just want to clarify it's the additional material uh, conditions, not the original. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um... All in favor? Okay, you have unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Sani. Best of luck with your uh, your build uh, following the appeal period. And thank you to um, the neighbor and to Mr. Choles. Uh, we've said what we have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. On to the, uh, the next application, uh, which is item number 16 for Tetton Hall Road. Well, that was the one. So that was Mr. Flynn's. That one was deferred. Um, good. That means we only have two more. Uh, item 17, 2715 Street. It's an application to construct a two story rear addition, a second story addition over the existing dwelling, and to convert a portion of the existing dwelling into an attached garage. We have three variances a previous decision from uh, 2020, January 2022. Um, And we have, uh, there were two different refusals on this, on this property. Mm -hmm. I believe there is. Urban forestry is looking for conditions one and two. We have opposition from 25 and 20 set nine, both adjacent uh, uh, dwellings. And um, then uh, something about, uh, okay. Anyway, um, let's see who the speakers are on this. Alex Marrero, uh, the agent for the applicant, as well as the neighbor at 29, one of the two adjacent uh, neighbors who's written in to us. Okay, so uh, let's uh, start off with uh, Mr. Marrero. Welcome, sir. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, committee members. 
Um, as you mentioned, this is my third time coming over for the application. Um, I'm asking for two uh, variances and one existing. The variance number one, the floor index is at 0 0.78. The home, the entire home is 2,200 square feet. The second variance is the unexisting zero PA setback. If you look at the drawings, I'm not making the house any wider. It's just extending the existing dwelling. And the number third variance is the height, which was the biggest issue that the committee had the last time that we had uh, this application in front of you. So right now it's, I'm at 7.45 meters. I'm asking for an 18 inch variance on the height of the wall. Yeah, you were here in, sorry, I just trying to, you were here twice in the last couple of months. Correct. I was the last time on March 24th. Okay, you didn't buy a appeal, you just make new applications, you're uh, you're good for business. You had one in January and one in March. Correct. And now it's June. Okay, so can you, I don't know, you can you summarize the change you made since the last refusal? You're saying the committee was, um, the concern was with the height? Yes, uh, and the original application, I had five variances. Uh, yeah. I deleted two of them. Um, in the second application, I had the same three variances. The 0 0.78 index remains the same, which is in line with other approvals that are happening in that neighborhood. I myself had a property approval at 83%. Yeah, okay, okay, so I see the change this time. You've taken the height down to 7 point, only a half, like less than half a meter higher than what's permitted. It's only 18 inches. Yeah, and before it was like uh, 1.3. Okay. Okay, thank you for summarizing that. Um, we do have your neighbor. So first of all, let's see if committee members have any questions for you based on your presentation. Thank you. If not, let's hear from the neighbor and you'll have a chance to reply. So we'll hear from the neighbor, Ange Regas. Hello. Hello. Can you? Welcome. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, we have your letter. We'll put it up on the board while we. Uh... Okay. okay, I'm on. I'm on the telephone, so I can't see yeah. what you're showing. Yeah, um, I'm just putting up I... the letter you sent us. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, my other neighbor couldn't uh, couldn't be here, but you've read his letter and his uh, objections. Uh, most of which, or all of which I share. Um, yep. So it wasn't just the main was the height. It was the height in combination with the size. Um, my neighbor and I both, and I believe the committee at the last two refusals, this new application does not come down one iota in size. It is still 30% over the maximum size which is 0 0.6 times the area. This one is still 0 0.78 times the area. We do not consider that 30% is, um, is minor. It's quite, it's quite major. For me, it's the combination of the house length and height, the overall size, which equals a hugely oversized blockage beside my yard. I included some photos with my letter. As you can see, I already live beside a triplex and um, if you can see in that photo, I took two photos of the wall that is on the um, north side of my property, which extends almost 25 feet past my house. And that is only 20 feet high at the, um, the up to the underside of the eaves. And this, this house that this proposal going up next door will be four feet higher than that massive wall, and it will extend 15 feet uh, 15 feet, nine inches past my house. So if you look at the picture of the, uh, the current dwelling from the back, I've taken a picture of the addition. So the current dwelling is 48 feet, but the last eight feet are that little addition that sticks out at the back, um, which is uh, a stairwell that goes down to the basement. So they are proposing on top of that another 7.9 feet in length, which will essentially make it 15.9 feet past my house and it will come like that that small addition will be widened so essentially i will have a brick giant brick wall on my left 
and an even bigger brick wall on my right of a higher one of at least four feet. So they want to go, they still want to go over the, the uh, maximum height, which is seven feet, um, sorry, seven meters. They want to go 7.45. Uh, and uh, I will be trapped. I will have my sunlight uh, obliterated. Uh, I have only two windows on that side that would get sunlight. I have a small window on my in my kitchen, and I've submitted photos of my window on the second floor, which right now the sun pours in and it, it illuminates the, um, the second story landing, and it goes down the stairwell into my front uh, hallway and the open living room. Um, a, a brick wall erected beside, you know, six point six feet away, which is the size of the narrow mutual drive. I'm going to be looking out on a brick wall and there will be no sunlight coming in at all. I mean, I, I have lived here for 17 years. I'm invested in this community. I have no intention of leaving. I love living here. Um, this is a, a person who I do not believe will be living in this home. I believe this is a, a, a project to uh, reconstruct a new home and sell it to someone else. And, um, you know, where, where are the priorities for the current homeowner? The current residents of the area, longtime residents of the area, and, and my needs are to be set aside for this uh, immense four-bedroom, five-bathroom home, far too large for the size of the lot. Um, so these are my objections. I think that it's inappropriate. It's not fitting. It's Like I said, it's unsuitable for this size of the lot. Um, after the last refusal, the house went on the market briefly, I think for just a couple of weeks. And I, I don't know how serious they were about selling because um, absolutely nothing that was done for the presentation. I don't believe that the owners care for this, for this property. The for sale sign fell off in a windstorm and it is still lying on the front lawn. Um, there is a, a crack of 99 inches, 88 feet long in the foundation. The foundation has crumbled onto the mutual driveway, which is a mutual driveway, and there's all kinds of debris which has never been picked up. And with every rainfall, the crack widens and more and more of the cement foundation falls onto the driveway. Um, the, the grass is about two feet high. Nobody comes, nobody looks after it. Uh, I'm afraid there are there could be snakes in the grass. Yeah, if you can please wrap up, ma'am. You're over your time, and you're getting into sort of non planning type issues. I, you sorry, can deal I, with planning I, issues, but I, 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 I appreciate I just, you mentioning I, it. I, I know. I just mentioned that briefly to yeah, let sorry, you know that what I'm up. So I'm, I think I'm that I'm upset with that also, but they're they're really not things we're supposed to consider. But I understand you mentioning, but you are out of time now. So if you'd like to wrap up and thank you for your uh, I, your position on like, this matter. Okay, to wrap up, this is a 24 foot high house, four feet higher, um, four feet seven inches higher than the uh, uh, dwelling on the on the opposite side of me, which is a triplex. Um, it will dramatically alter my property, my property value. I believe it will kill my, my garden that I've spent so many years. I'm outside a lot. I, 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 I'm just, it, it's uh, devastating to me. And I don't understand the stubborn refusal, the persistent refusal to reduce the size to a more proportionate dwelling. They've, they, they haven't reduced the size at all, other than a come down in the height, which is still over the, the maximum. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Rigas. Thank you. Um, let's go back to Ms. Marora. I'd like to point out or ask staff, I guess in all three of these, uh, each application, this is the third application and we're in the uh, you know sixth month of the year and we've had three applications. I don't know if that's a record or not. Um, I don't know if they keep stats on that like they do at the end in the NHL. Um, has community planning not weighed in on any of these applications? Yes, they have no comments. They actually, I actually worked with community planning before I originally set up the first application back in February. Uh, in February, I asked for a building length variance, and I also asked for a 0.82 FSI, which I reduced to 0.78 after I fell in the first committee. 
the 0 0.82 is in relation to other applications that have been approved by this committee in the same area. The house length, which the neighbor is mentioning, we are not asking for a house length uh, vari variance anymore. We are within our uh, bylaws. We are not asking for a variance in setbacks for the backyard, meaning that is as per the city regulations. Um, the house is only asking for 18 inches variance on the flat roof, no, no four feet from 22 to 24. And um, the window that the neighbor mentioned that she has on the side is a 6.5 meters. So even if the house was a seven meters, that window will be affected a little bit with the sunlight. The house faces west and the backyard faces east, means that the sun goes over the houses, not on the side. So it will be minimum the effect on the, sun, on the sunlight. Um, I don't know if you have any more questions. Yeah, I was just asking that question, but thanks for sort of morphing into a good segue into your rebuttal, which I'll take that as your rebuttal to Ms. Rigas. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add to that? No, like this very I was basic. asking about whether community planning and you sort of uh, led into oh. your sort of rebuttal. So I'm just asking you if you, there's anything you'd like to add to that rebuttal. No, community planning has no comments, and I worked with them before the first application. They had no comments. Okay, on the first I know you answered my question, but now you're also answered, Ms. Rigas. Is there anything you'd like to add as your response, to Ms. Rigas? No, no, no. Sorry about that. Somebody came in the house. I guess your dog wants to weigh in. Uh, yeah, so, so do you, is there anything else you'd like to add to uh, Ms. Rigas? Okay, we all love dogs, not a problem. So, so about did that. you want to add anything else, sir? No, thank you. Have you. To say? Okay, so now we'll see if members have any questions for you. Um, or if they're ready to bring a motion. Okay, yeah, members, any questions? Yes, uh, Danny has a question. Danny, I can barely hear you. Please speak Danny, up. Danny Bellissimo has a question. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, uh, could, draw, could the, the drawing 80-1 be put on? I think that's the elevation, front elevation. And I just have a question of clarification. Because it's metric, which is the way it's supposed to be, I uh, just want to make sure I get these numbers correct. I need the applicant to verify what I'm saying. And my questions relate this, that's the drawing, thank you. Uh, with regards to the overall height, which keeps getting smaller, but maybe not small enough. Uh, is, is my calculation correct that your basement floor to ceiling is eight foot eight? And that your first floor ceiling height is 12 feet? The, the, the way the height is measured is for the garage is 7.2 to below the floor. And over the garage is eight feet to below the floor again, and the second floor is eight feet. What it does is the 12 feet is the area that is not in top of the garage. So we lower that area into the basement. So it's a combination of eight feet and 12 foot is the first floor, right? Correct. The height over the garage, I reduced it to eight feet. In the original application, we had it as 10 feet throughout. So in order to lower the height, I reduced the 10 to eight. And the second floor, I reduced the nine foot ceilings to eight as well. So now I have eight feet over the garage and eight feet on the second floor. So the first floor is mainly eight feet. The second floor is eight feet as well, correct? Correct. And then your parapet, your stub wall above that's two feet. Correct. And that's an architectural feature basically, but it goes all the way around the whole house and adds to the whole total height. Yes, it does. If I were to move that you do not get that height, could you live with that? That is actually the width of the roof, the, the joist, the flat joist that goes across. The way they measure the height of the wall is to underneath the roof. So the 7.4 meters, 7.45 are below the roof. That two feet is the width of the joist plus the membrane and asphalt that goes on top. I uh, could reduce it maybe four or five inches, but no more than that. So what I'm asking is if, if you do not get the height um, and you want to keep your parapet because it's a design feature, 
will you be satisfied with the floor to ceiling heights in, in the rest of the house? Would it make it work? My second floor will lose 18 inches. Pardon? Then my, my ceiling height in the second floor will lose 18 inches. 18. So That's the variance that I'm requesting. The variance is for the your, height of the main wall. Your height limit is seven meters. You're saying you cannot make the house with a parapet work with seven meter height. If we, if I was to move that number three, not be granted, which is the main issue that the neighbors are complaining about. Yes. The other uh, one, the I can, neighbor, I can, sorry, the neighbor I can mentioned. take that variance away. Pardon? If I do a, if I do a slope roof. Okay. Because the slope roof will give me nine and a half meter height. So if you, re, if you decide to remove that variance, I'm fine, but I will dis, I will change the design and put a, a slope roof and bring it below nine and a half meters. So it would be you, much higher. But, so I can but, remove the variance, yes. I, what, what I was asking was, can you still maintain the flat roof and work with seven meter height is for, to get a, a decent height for the ceiling? That for, in other words, eight but foot, which is what I normal can, because I'm at eight feet and eight feet. You cannot. Less okay. than that, it's below building code. I think you got, we're not having a charrette here, Danny and, and the applicant, but I've let this go on to see if something could be. But one thing I just want to clarify, the neighbor did not say that height is her main issue. She claimed, she talked about the overall size of the house. She's mentioned that he didn't bring it down since last time and that he brought down the height, but she's concerned with, does that way everyone else hear that or did you mention that the height is? That the yeah, but it's 0.78. And that's sir, below sir, I'm not asking you to the oh, talk sorry. now. Sorry. Sir, I'm not talking to you right now. I'm talking to the members. Thank you. So, Danny, I'm just clarifying that what uh, the neighbor, I believe, said is that she's concerned with the overall size of the house, which hasn't come down since the other iteration, the last iteration. He brought down the height, but he didn't bring down the size. Okay, so um, okay, so you've had that back and forth. I don't know, Danny, if you got your your answer, yeah, but yeah, you could and couldn't do. But uh, any other questions, or is someone ready for a motion uh, with comments, please? So, Danny, you have your answer. Yes, I thought you heard me. I, I did, yeah, he, he took it for me. Thank you. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so any other questions or a motion? I'm ready to make a motion. I think the applicant's been here a few times and has uh, done revisions to hopefully address uh, concerns. Um, the neighbor was chiefly concerned, I think, with the building length, and that's not one of the variances requested here. Uh, the size of the house appears to be in the neighborhood of, of what's being built right now. Uh, it's 204 square meters. Um, so I'm comfortable with uh, uh, moving for approval, subject to um, forestry conditions. The variances requested are minor in nature and meet the four tests. Okay, thank you, Mr. Palmer, for that motion. We have a second for Mr. Palmer's motion. Mr. Taylor, thank you. Any comment? Sorry, Mr. Taylor, any comment? No, I, I would just echo Mr. Palmer's comment. Good attempt has been made here to uh, uh, reduce the uh, height variance. Yes, the area uh, FSI hasn't changed, but I don't see that as being a significant matter for consideration. So, okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, all in favor? Okay, you have unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Marara. Thank you, Ms. Rigas. Um, thank you. This matter has been approved. Okay. Uh, moving on to our last uh, item of the morning session, um, it's actually a very interesting application in my in my opinion. Uh, it's an application uh, for a uh, to construct a new detached dwelling. A previous T Lab decision uh, in uh, whenever it was November. Anyway, uh, approved variance relating to lot coverage and lot frontage, but again, it did reject or refuse the FSI variance. Uh, we have before us um, applicant's presentation. Um, we have two letters of opposition from two and three Wadsworth. 
and we have a copy of the T Lab decision, a uh, twelve-page decision with with uh, attachments, and um, they were the six point six five. FSI was ref was not approved. Point uh, five one, I believe, is. Um, I don't know. I'm just was question questioning in my notes. You know, like to hear whether T Lab. I didn't just sort of skim the application. Whether they gave any indication as to what they felt was uh, app appropriate, and just point out another very interesting fact is apparently five and seven watts worth, which originally one lot, and they were split, but they were not split through the severance process, um, which is uh, sort of interesting. Um, so, okay, let's hear, we have three speakers. First, the speaker, uh, Michael Lafreniere is the agent for the applicant. And then we have the neighbors from two and three Wadsworth who have written in. So let's get started. Welcome okay, so um, I'm here, you can hear me, I assume? Perfect. Okay, so there's a lot of history on this project. What's in front of us today, I think is a pretty simple set of variances. We're asking for an additional 28 to 29 square feet on a, on a building here. So we have an existing building permit in place. I've included the pages from the building permit file, so you can, you can reference those if you want to. Um, I'll go a little bit into the history of the project, just so you guys are, are clear on that. So what this is, this is a whole lot that existed in a plan of subdivision, and when the neighborhood was developed, the plan of this this lot was not developed at that time. So this lot was given over to Seven Wadsworth, but it remains a full lot. So it's 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 through a very simple action with the with the land office, you're able to say, no, no, I want this to be a full lot as it once was. So it reverted back to being a full lot. So there was no consent required to split it off because it existed originally. Okay, but it's it's a regularly shaped, it's it, it is a regularly shaped, which is and, and is slightly undersized, which is it has more frontage, but it, it there's there's reasons why it wasn't developed in the yeah. original set in the original development of the neighborhood because it's a pie shaped lot. Yeah, so perhaps someone can put up the location map, it shows very clearly. I'll just I'll just keep going. So yeah, go when in 2019 we came to committee of adjustment with a proposal that again had no variances for height or setback or any of that. It had a simple variance for an FSI of 0.65. That was approved at committee Let's go back 2019. To his presentation, please, staff. Sorry, staff, can you please put the applicant's presentation back up on the board? Thank you. So it was approved at 0.65 by this board and it was subsequently appealed to T Lab. I did submit uh, yesterday uh, a summary of the T-Lab decision, but I'll just go ahead and, and if, you, if you want me to, I can quote directly from it, but I'm going to do a, I'll do it quite simply to begin with. Yep. So what, uh, between the two planners, what the debate was is what the, what the physical character of the neighborhood is. And uh, our planner uh, asserted that the physical character was quite mixed and had a various numbers of there's apartment buildings on the street, there's some triplexes, there's other stuff going on. The, the other planner asserted that the physical character existed only up until a, an FSI of 0.4. But then it says that upon cross-examination, the member of T-Lab uh, had, the, had the, uh, the opposing planner admit that, that in fact there's a second characteristic that the T-Lab planner recognized of houses between 0.4 and 0.6 FSI. And so if you subsequently read through it, the, the reason why we lost at T-Lab is not so much the 0.65 FSI, but more how it presented to the street, or, or, or rather the two things together. So okay. because it's a pie-shaped lot, it has a big front, a small back. When you put the FSI of 0.65 on the lot, it yields a very front, large front elevation. So the front elevation, the previous proposal was 11 meters high, had some sculpting and a mansard roof and 7.1 meters wide. We're currently proposing a, a, a height of eight meters and 6.4 meters wide, which is a 35% reduction in the overall uh, amount of the main wall that faces the street. Because as you can see on this on this small model, the proposed third floor is, is pushed back about three and a half meters from the front main wall. And the front main wall is also sculpted so that it doesn't present a flat wall to the street so that the, the uh, I mean, the house is quite a bit smaller. So um, the, the overall house size is 122 square meters. We have an existing building permit for this 
virtually this exact same shape at 94 square meters. That house is under construction. So the, the net change that any neighbor is going to see, if you go to the rear elevation, which is the drawing, the page above this one, is that there's a single dormer on the rear of the building that doesn't exist in the building permit. And we want to add that dormer. It's a legal dormer. It's less than 40% width. So there's no variance for that dormer. We want to add that dormer and occupy a room that exists inside the roof. And the roof is has no change to it other than the dormer. The second variance is for the front terrace. So the front terrace is permitted at four square meters. Well, because we've pushed the third floor wall back by three and a half meters, we end up with quite a large space up there. So we would like to use the full 10 meters as a terrace, recognizing that, you know, it's a reasonably small residence. And, and we already have this space that we've created by pushing the third floor wall back to, to minimize the massing. So we figured we might as well take advantage of it. Um, I think that's kind of all I need to say right now. Um, there is an existing uh, a, a, an approval that was just recently granted for a similar infill lot on another lot of record that existed that's 200 meters away at 99 Rosemount, where uh, it was just recently approved at uh, 0.89 for FSI. So we think that 0.51 is, uh, is, is highly supportable. It's, you know, 28 square meters and my reading of the T lab is that, you know, the member was saying that there's a clear class of buildings between 0.4 and 0.6 on the street and in the physical neighborhood. So we think 0.51 is, you know, well within that. Hey, thank you, Mr. Lafreniere. Um, so basically I was just, yeah. So basically you got that was approved to committee, went to T lab a year and a half ago. This it was rendered, you were like uh, 0.25 over the bylaw at 0.65. You were refused. You've now come back at 0.51 in terms of King Solomon. You've come even not quite cut the baby in half. You're now 0.11 over. So you've come down quite somewhat from what you were at uh, T-Lab with. And uh, you've been honest enough to advise that it's not strictly a number. It's a pie-shaped lot. It has certain constraints with it. So thank you for that. Uh, let's now hear from the two neighbors uh, who were in. I see one of them was actually suggesting that this matter be deferred, but we're, we are hearing this matter. I'm just reading their letter, so we'll take it as an objection letter. Uh, they're seeking a refusal. So let's hear from the two neighbors. The first one is Dave Curry at 2 Wadsworth. Uh, first of all, does anyone have any questions? Sorry for um, Mr. Lafreniere before we move on. Okay, so perhaps, uh, yeah, if there will be questions, perhaps we can save them to the end, but no one wants to weigh in now with a question. So let's hear from Mr. Curry and let's have Mr. Curry's letter up on the board while he speaks. Uh, sure. Hello, Committee of Adjustment and staff and Mr. Lafreniere. Uh, good afternoon, I guess it is now. Yep. Um, Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. It, it, um, the, the main objection here is, is to consider the city official plan chapter four. Uh, they're, they're talking about uh, built form features being characteristic of the neighborhood. And I consider the terrace to be a built form feature. The, I, I went for a 20 minute walk around the neighborhood and literally no one, no one has like a three story building and no one, no one has a terrace facing the street. This is partly like a convention of privacy that we have between neighbors that like we respect each other enough to just use the backyard, you know, and I, I think inviting a terrace would invite a bad precedent and bad trouble to the neighborhood. And I ask you to kindly reject requested variance number two for the 10 square meter platform. Um, in addition, uh, there, I, I was hoping you could make a note here. There's in front of the house. There's a, a a stone wall built by James Gove that is extremely characteristic of the neighborhood. Everyone in the neighborhood has one, and I just want to make sure that in in your decision, you could ensure that this stone wall, which is on city property, remains undamaged and intact, and 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 still presenting to the street. 
Regarding the FSI, I would like to thank Master Lafreniere for his concessions so far. Um, and, and that we've come a long way since this was first discussed, most certainly. Um, but I mean, it's still like it's kind of a massive structure in the back, even if it doesn't present to the street like that. What they're asking for is they're trying to build something that's three bedroom, two bathroom. And when you sell that, you're going to get about $200,000 more than a two bedroom, one bathroom, right? So, I mean, consider this is not a person who's going to here. This is this is going to be flipped and the residents are going to have to live with your decision for many years coming. I'm here to just ask you, remind you that your job is to uphold the general intent and purpose of the official plan and to please read chapter four because it, you know, this one kind of sticks out like a sore thumb and whoever lives there, we just hope they fit in and we hope they'd be good neighbors. Um, I, yeah, so it, it's really the variance number two that we have a problem with. And um, also that uh, I'm not sure if there was a forestry requirement on this file, but um, I believe there's a policy that has like city trees that are removed have to be replaced. And I'd like to ask you to add that as a condition to have a tree planted in the front yard of this house when it's done. So to summarize, it's it's the 10 meter platform uh it's the go the the stone retaining wall in the front and it's the tree that we're asking you to most consider but also to remember the massing and if you've ever walked around the neighborhood and consider how this building will fit in with other structures in the neighborhood i think you have to consider the general intent and purpose of chapter four of the city official plan thank you for your time i appreciate uh, being invited to speak yeah, thank you for your comments, Mr. Curry. Just like to point out to you, um, based on your comment about the front, the proposed front story terrace not being a, a characteristic, that the applicant, as you see from the variance, is entitled to a uh, platform of four meters squared. They're looking for ten meters squared. I don't know if that's a design feature because it just looks better. Uh, I haven't checked the plans to see. Hopefully, it's off a um, a bedroom, a principal bedroom, to have a cup of coffee or something, and not to have a big party. Uh, which is typically these platforms but when you say it's not permitted it is actually permitted he's permitted to have a four square meter one I just wanted to point that out to you and as well as i didn't mention in my there is an urban forestry condition of urban forestry condition three on this so urban forestry is involved with this application um okay so i just wanted to um the applicant will respond to your concerns but i just wanted to state that the starting point that it may be out of character, but he's entitled to a four square meter one without coming to getting permission from this committee. Uh, anyone have any uh, comments or quest com questions for um, Mr. Curry? Uh, and if not, he was across the street. If not, we'll hear from the next door neighbor, um, the neighbor number three, uh, Julia Dinner. For, uh, for hearing me out today. Um, I have similar concerns to uh, to David. Um, it, it it really is precedence and privacy that are my biggest concerns. Um, I believe that this is one of the only single dwelling, uh, single family dwellings that would be with a third floor and would have a terrace at the th third floor level. Um, I, permitting this kind of a variance, it, it really just, it opens the door for more changes in the neighborhood that would change the current uh, prevailing characteristics. But leaving that aside, the privacy issue is is really my, my bigger concern. The terrace at the front uh, is going to cause, or, or going to appear to cause privacy issues, especially if with the larger uh, platform at the top that they have multiple parties, for example, and that's not something that we can control. Um, having trees at the front of the lot, as uh, Mr. Curry re uh, requested, uh, would reduce this. So if you do agree to this, I, I would request that you put some kind of a condition to have additional trees planted. Um, 
the privacy issue also exists at the back, and I'm not sure if this is something that you can address in this forum, but um, I would also request that trees be planted at the back because currently my backyard is completely open because they have removed all trees and all bushes along the property line as part of this construction. They have also removed them all the way along the front hedge line. I. It is very concerning to me that I am so open. Um, they have also been deceitful and I, I, I don't know how to express my concerns on that. Um, when I asked if they were applying for variances in May, they informed me that they were not. And then I found out at the end of May that they had already submitted them in April. I, I I don't know how to I don't know where to go with this. Um, I have repeatedly asked to go over these variances with them, to go over their plans. Um, it really would have been nice to have been consulted before we got here so that we weren't actually wasting your time. Um, All right. Uh, other than that, um, oh, there was one more thing I wanted to discuss. Ah, yes. Um, in the case of number seven, which I understand is not the subject here, but it's it's showing precedence. They did all of their changes, and then retroactively asked for variances. Um, to be approved. Now, they were minor variances, and I would never have, you know, gone against Sorry, them. Sorry, ma'am, is, 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 is that the I, same builder? Is, is that the same owner? It's the same is builder, same? yes. Okay. Same well, owner. Anyway, it's really not. They're coming to us at this point. Uh, I don't know if it was twigging, I, but... I understand. I, just saying, I guess you're point. saying you're worried they're going to still come back and That's do correct. things after the fact. Well, your, your comment's on the record, so... I would like to make sure that Hopefully that, that, that won't happen this time. means that they cannot do that. Okay. All right. I think that's that's as much as I have. Um, yeah. Again, again, the I guess the issue here is is they returned down at, at 0.65 and they've come back now at 0.51, which whereas 0.4 is permitted. And uh, whether um, in terms of some of the con, like, and Mr. Mr. Lafreniere will do his own rebuttal, but just have to point out there's no variance for three story. There's no variance for height. I understand. Planning has not weighed in, which is perhaps interesting. Um, so having said that, let anyone else have any questions uh, for uh, for Ms. Ms. Dinner? Uh, uh, if not, let's go back to Mr. Lafreniere for uh, a rebuttal. And in terms of the fact you haven't been consulted, it's not very nice. I guess there's, we hope we like at the city that people can consult with their neighbors, um, uh, perhaps because of the history of this, and it was like T-Lab hearing a year and a half ago, um, it is what it is, but uh, there is no legal requirement to do that. It's it's always good practice, but we can't, uh, nothing we can say about that. Okay, so let's go back to Mr. Lafreniere for his rebuttal. Um, I personally haven't had any communication with uh, any of the neighbors over this application, but as, as they mentioned, there is, they are on the same site right beside each other all the time. So there's lots of communication and whether the communication is to everyone's liking or not might be a different question. And as it refers to seven Wadsworth, that was all done legally with a permit. And, you know, there was no fines or anything that ever happened there. So it was just a procedural question that there was a permit. And then we went to committee and then we got a second permit. But there was nothing done that was uncouth in any way. Um, also, I think it's worth noting that no protected trees were ever removed here. There were some bushes along the two property lines that were cleared, but um, there's been arborist reports and arborist reviews, both with seven and five, and there's never been any trees that have been removed without a permit or with a permit. And the only tree, there's no tree on the site that's being removed as part of this application. And we're more than happy to provide a city owned tree as noted in the urban forestry. Um, I should also note that the, the zoning actually allows four, four meters squared terraces one on each elevation. So, um, you know, my feeling on it is that the 10 square meter terrace is 
a result of, of, of building massing, of, of trying to present a small, a small elevation to the street and pushing the mass back on the street so that, as noted in the T-Lab decision, uh, at T-Lab, they were unhappy that the, there was such a large elevation presented to the street. Even though that elevation didn't have any variances for height or setback or any of that, it still presented a large elevation. So we've reduced that elevation by 35%, pushing the massing back. We've also reduced the house from 0.65 to 0.51. We have a building permit in place to build 0.94. So we're asking for 28 square meters extra to move some walls around on the interior, get a little bit of extra space. We're not, you know, none of the ceilings have excessive height on the interior. And what the, what the difference between the building permit is that's already approved and under construction and the approval we're seeking here on the exterior of the building is a dormer at the back. So I'm happy to answer some questions if, if you have any. If anyone wants to discuss the terrace, I'm happy to discuss that. Yeah, no, I just had one question, turn over to the other members. So the terrace that's permitted at four square meters, as I mentioned, and they're at 10.4. Is that just a matter of squaring it off? Perhaps can we look at that? And is it off a, a bedroom? It's not off a common area, no plan to have big parties out there? I I, I have no plan for any parties there whatsoever. I'm not going to live there. I, I, I can't control, you know, if... if I'm people just asking, is, is it off a bedroom or is it off a common area? It, 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 it is it, it is off of a... I don't think it's a thing we can really regulate in the zoning. I'm just, I'm just going to the drawing right now. I believe the staircase does go up there, so you, you can get out there from the common area. Oh, you can. Okay. Yes. No. If the if the right, if, just the, if the approval was contingent bedroom. on having it go through the bedroom, I'm sure that's something we could accommodate. Okay. So my next my question is because typically, you know, four square meters to ten square meters, if it's off a bedroom, it just because it fits in and they do it a certain size so it doesn't look odd. Uh, in this case, could you live with the four square meters then? Then I'm asking if it's off a common area. And there's a potential for more people there may be more reason to want to limit it to four square meters for the protection of the neighbors so my question is could you live with four? Could, if you don't get that variance or could you cut down that variance under well we already have the area? permit for it at four square meters so that's okay. that's that's what we have is we have a we have a masonry okay. wall that wraps around the exterior of it you know what what i think would be more amenable so that you can act the terrace exists because we have this space that exists because we pushed the wall back. So we put up a guard halfway through it. So you say, well, you've got this flat roof section. You're only using half of it. You know, yeah. perhaps it's better that we build the we build the the, the masonry wall to to you know one point one five meters. We build it four inches taller or something if there's a if there's a concern. But okay. I don't want to belabor the point, but I think this is something that could be uh, you know that the neighbors especially whatever builder home that if it's off a uh, bedroom even if it's larger it's not going to be used for parties if it's off a bedroom or typically whatever it's just that size because that's what fits okay in this case you're telling me there's a sort of a, a wall or a divider perhaps if it's off a common area there's more of a reason to keep it to four square meters or less than 10 square meters that's my only comment to you and the other neighbors and to the committee so i'll now put it over to see if anyone has any questions yeah mr taylor mr chair i would have a question related to what you just articulated would reducing the size of the platform reduce the fsi no the the the, the platform doesn't count as fsi okay thank you Okay, any other questions for uh, Mr. Lafreniere or either the neighbors for that matter, or is someone ready for a motion with a comment, please? Um, yeah, no, no questions for the applicant, but just mm -hmm. an observation. It, it appears that that uh, platform deck is off a common area and I guess you could redesign the entire floor that it's off a bedroom, but the bedroom is on the opposite side of the house. Yeah. It's on the back of the house. The terrace is at the front. 
Um, but from what I see, I think this is, uh, I think the neighbors would be opposing whatever variances were requested. This is of a personal nature, having really nothing to do with planning. Um, that's the way I look at it. Uh, I think I've been at every hearing for the two properties. Um, so we're dealing with a situation where we've got an existing lot that's irregular and you've got to put a unique building on here. And I think the applicant has made repeated attempts at that. So uh, just that comment. If, if the fellow members are ready for a motion, I'm ready. Go ahead. Anyone else have any questions before Mr. Palmer weighs in? No? Okay, okay I'm ahead. prepared to move for approval of the uh, variance one of the FSI and not approve the variance two for the uh, enlarged terrace deck area. And that's subject to forestry condition number three. Okay, thank you, Mr. Palmer, for that motion. Do you have a second for Mr. Palmer's motion? Ms. Lissimo, thank you. Any comment? Okay, all in favor? You have unanimous approval. Uh, so, um, variance one approved, variance two not approved. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lafreniere. Thank you to the neighbors. And uh, it is now 12.22. And uh, I guess we stand adjourned for lunch. Uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, when would you like to uh, return? Because we need the sound check and uh, all of that stuff. Uh, we need an hour for lunch. It takes us to 1.22, uh, 1.45. Does that work? That's perfect. Thank you. Okay, thanks. We'll see everyone back at 145. Have a have a good break. So is that 125 or 145? 145. Thank you. Paul, can you put something on the screen for anyone that's joining?